do I eat? How do I recover? How much do I sleep? How do I react? What if this happens? What if that happens? Am I prepared? It all adds up. It's not about what I do. It's about what I don't do. No excuses, no shortcuts, no gimmicks, no tomorrows. Where I am is exactly where I'm supposed to be. Here is where the epiphany came to me. I'm part of the most prestigious, most decorated SEAL team in the history of modern warfare. We never ever skimp on body armor. We never skimped on weapon systems, the demolitions. We never skimped on any of that. We're gonna work hard, but we need to recover. We need to repair better. We need to train better. We need to train smarter. Thorn has really become my one-stop shop. Look at a population of, of our military or our athletes. We have a multitude of different issues from individual to individual. The goal is to educate them. Whatever spectrum of fitness you need, Thorne has the product for you. Give us the best, give us your best. Our goal is to be the best in which we do. In Thorne products, there is no better product, and that is why we use it. My name is Annie Thorstetter two times fittest woman in the world, and this will be my 12th time competing at the CrossFit Games. Life is busy, complex, and amazing, but life is also full of choices and decisions we need to make. RP makes it easy for me to fuel for my performance at the gym and for at-home life with my family. I spend less time worrying about what to eat and when, and more time playing with my little girl. Our lives were slowing down until we made a change. As we've gotten older, it feels like we've lost a little bit of that magic between us. But now, well, I'm ready to go anytime. That's right, anytime. And of course, we always use protection. Introducing Bikes, the number one expert recommended way to reinvigorate your life. Use Once Daily Bikes by Trek. Ask your local bike shop which bike is right for you. When I did my level one, I actually didn't want to be a coach. I was working as a young lawyer in a law firm, just starting out in my professional career, and I found CrossFit. I fell in love with it at the gym I was going to. There were some really inspiring people there that made me want to do my level one. Once I did it, I guess that just made the passion even more intense, and I was asked to start doing some coaching on the side, which I did, and I really loved that. The experience of interacting with, meeting and positively influencing people from all walks of life has been one of the best things about being a CrossFit coach. In a gym, in an affiliate, you will meet people from all walks of life. And in that, you're also going to inspire people to live healthier lives and ignite that passion for fitness that you have in other people. So that has been one of the, the greatest things about being a CrossFit coach.
Welcome back to the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin, as we get ready for day number two, uh, the Noble CrossFit Games. It's day number one for our age group and adaptive divisions. Very good Good morning. I'm Jeff Freiman alongside my broadcast partner, Bill Grunner. Later on, we'll hear from Derek Forrest on the competition floor. Should be a fun one today, Bill. We take a look at the future, some longevity, and the fact that fitness is for everyone. Well, fitness is for everyone. We see the young, we see the old, but what we get to toss down to these guys right out of the gate is a nice, long event. Get these guys warmed up, get, get these guys ready to go. Starting off with some running, starting off with some rope climbs, starting off with some dumbbell shoulder to overhead. This event really is going to test what kind of capacity these athletes have. It's a 30 minute time cap and we have a lot of running. And look at those rope climbs. We've, this is the third time that these athletes have seen rope climbs as a qualifier event or as the event um, in competition. Well, as you can see, Bill, you just told us we're going to run a little bit, climb up some roads, little gymnastics there, uh, throw, away, <laughs> throw around some dumbbells out there. What is the recipe for success in this event? Well, you really have to know your race. You've got to run the race. It's the longest bit of this event. We have a 1,400 meter, a 1,200 meter, and then an 800 meter run. So that is going to be the chunk of this. So you have to race that run. Push yourself. Don't let that be just a coast. And then after that, you got to know your ropes. Are you a good rope climber or are you not? If you are, you really need to push that. Uh, and then also you need to make sure that you're ready to hit those ropes because the last thing you want to do is be so exhausted when you get there that you're unable to hit those gymnastic movements. Take a look at how they are going to line up. We've got two divisions here. It's going to be 14, 15, and 16, and 17, starting out with the 14, 15-year-old boys. And you're tuning in. Watch the middle lanes. Uh, look for the uh, last number five, RJ Mester in lane number 15, the top seed coming in to this division. We take a look at the other lanes here, the 16 to 17 year old boys and in lane 35, Caleb McClure, he's the top seed coming in out of the semi-finals as well. And that's the 16 to 17 year old boys. Going over to the 14 to 15 year old females, Lucy McGonigal. She'll wear 141 out of Belfast, Ireland in the United Kingdom. She'll be the top seed coming out of the semifinals. We shift on over to the 16, 17-year-old girls and Olivia Kirkstetter, maybe the most well-known athlete in these two divisions. And we'll talk a little bit more about her. Top seed uh, won it last year in the 14 to 15-year-old division. She highlights it now with more on the future of CrossFit. Let's head down to the competition floor in Derek Forrest. Thanks, guys. Yeah, this is the competition to watch, especially if you're looking for the future of CrossFit. On the women's side of things, on the individuals, you look at Mal O'Brien in first place on the women, alongside Emma Lawson, who's in second. Both teenagers, Mal O'Brien 18, Emma Lawson 17. When you look at this division here with the girls, we have two women who could potentially could be competing with them. It's Olivia Kerstetta and Lucy McGonigal. They're going to be lights out all competition long and can compete already with the individuals they look to have dominant performances this weekend guys thanks so much Derek now for the guaranteed rate athletes to watch and Bill boy we have some to watch th this week yeah you know when you look at the field I mean just look at that massive amount of athletes there on the floor you have to keep your eye on RJ Mester coming out of the qualifiers he was first in the open the semis and the quarterfinals so you know that he is going to be someone to watch for sure uh, great on the runs uh, or great on the rope climbs in the qualifying events so we we have to make sure that he's going to do something well here. I think he's going to be definitely someone to watch. After that, on the on the men's side in the 16-17, Ty Jenkins. So again, he is the returning champ. He is decent on the rope climbs, but he's very fast on the run. So we talked about you have to run the race. You got to know what you're getting after and really pushing the run. He's going to be one of those athletes to do that. If you look down on the ladies side, Lucy McGonigal, we already heard about her. Uh, young athlete. She was second last year in the 14 to 15 year olds, and she was just dominating through the qualifiers. So I can't, I'm just excited to watch what she does. Plus, I just really like saying her name. It's super fun to say her name. And then Olivia Kerstetter. I mean, we've talked about this female for so long and so much through the qualifiers. Was she going to go open? Was she not going to go open? She decided to stay here. And when you have a coach like Jacob uh, Hepner, you know that she not only has the weightlifting abilities, but he is known for his gymnastic and endurance ability so you know that that is going to build well for her in this competition well they are underway now we're going to start it out with a 1400 meter run as you talked about bill and it's going to give you a, a little bit of a challenge 
today that maybe if you were through the park yesterday early before the rain, obviously you run off the pavement, you run on some hard pan, but you're going to get off course and it's going to be a little bit like a road race. But with yesterday's run, it could present, you know, an extra challenge maybe you weren't expecting before the rain yesterday. Well, I, I know that if I had to do a run, I would not want to be running in wet, muddy, slothy ground. Uh, but one of, the th one of the crazy things about the weather here is we did have all those rains, but if you look out all across the the course now it doesn't look bad at all it's a completely different day i mean look at that look at that course i don't see any big mud piles uh so that's one of the things that's been really nice with the weather it's been able to dry it up and i mean you talk about yesterday versus today they're completely different days it is sunny it is warm these guys don't have to worry about that so now it's just about getting after this run and really making things happen benefit today too with that front coming through yesterday as we had the delay. It'll still warm up later this afternoon, but it has cooled off a bit, and these athletes starting this event at 9 in the morning for this first test. Yeah, and I, you know, I would rather be doing this one early in the morning myself. <laughs> it does get warm here. It does get humid here, but it's really nice out there on the on the course. All right, we talked about it. 1,400 meter run to start things off here. Uh, your first time to get out on the course. It's the longest run. You talked about it in your, 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 your keys. Is that Different people are going to get stuck on different, potentially different uh, implements. Uh, are you a runner or can you climb there? Are you efficient at climbing the ropes? I don't think uh, after that anything should give you any trouble. But the longest run, kind of a chance to kind of get into your head. You're heavy, breathing heavy for the first time today. And for any of the rookies here, which a lot in the team division right. are rookies, uh, you know, you've got the adrenaline going. Can you calm yourself down while maybe still pushing the pace a little bit? I, I think that it, one of the best movements you could have as the opening event to the CrossFit Games with all that pressure is a run because it allows you to just get out there, burn off some of that steam a little bit, and then get after it. So, yeah, all these athletes here are trying to settle in. They know that they want to be able to hit those rope climbs. And, to, you know, to your point, there, you know, I look across, when I was doing all my research on all these athletes, which there are a ton to be talking about here, which was super fun to learn about everybody, is the fact that there are going to be some athletes that have that rope climbing skill. How did they do in the quarterfinals when they had to do them, and then also in the semifinals and then now are they getting worried about that rope climb and one of the things we haven't really talked about is all the rope climbs that they had to do in the qualifiers were 15 foot rope climbs we're now a 20 foot rope climb so without thinking oh it's only four rope climbs i have to do you're actually adding the length of a whole nother rope climb on top of that Haley Cantac, the uh, female you just saw there on the screen, uh, trying to push it out up front. She says 17-year-old in the 16 to 17 unaffiliated. And last year was 13th in the 16 to 17. So she was looking to push the pace a little bit, but you can already see things spreading out here in the first 1400 run. And there is Haley on the camouflage just on the left side of your screen. So trying to get out a little bit in front and a couple females overall leaders but of course remember we are split into four divisions 14 15 year old uh, and 16 7 year old boys and girls divisions now I'm, I'm just really watching the pace of these athletes who's looking relaxed now we have some athletes that are up towards the front that's great uh right that right there is sabatini up in the front look at that pace nice and smooth i don't see her over breathing and you know getting to hang around guys like chris henshaw and stuff like that what i start to look at now as a coach and an analyst is how are they breathing do they seem relaxed are they breathing on every other step as they're going do they seem you know controlled especially as we start coming back into the into the uh the field where are those ropes are going to be one of the things that these athletes really want to do even if they're good at the rope climbs is Start to throttle down just a little bit as you make your way back into the or into the stadium here so that you can go right to the rope. The last thing you want to do is get to the rope, race to the rope, and then sit there and wait. Similar to those viewing here that and there are their local boxes at our affiliates, but I'm sure you tell your athletes, look, maybe if you're coming into the door, stop and walk it on in, then get <laughs> to your rope, get to your bar so you can come in and immediately go to work instead of sprinting all the way in and then hands on the knees. Yeah, the hurry up and wait seconds. just doesn't, that doesn't <laughs> do well, especially in a race. Here come our first athletes. Now you're in a quadrant of four ropes. The ropes are a first come, first serve as long as it's in that quadrant on the Zeus rig. 
And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that right there is RJ Mester. He was first to the rope and just went to that attack. Now, I really like the way he is doing Look at that rope climb. Hanging his arms nice and straight so he's not using his biceps. Really pulling those feet up to the top. But that's a great position and a great job on those rope climbs. Look at that. Nice big jump. Using those legs. Standing up nice and tall. Beautiful job. And what you're talking about, Bill, and, and tell us a little bit about this when you're in, and, and beautiful technique here again, getting the legs very, very high. You would like to turn a rope climb for newer athletes coming into CrossFit and newer to climbing ropes, more of a, a of a squat and take the, the taxation off of the bicep instead of pulling and then making small increments. The, any sort of gymnastic movement, you always have to know that the smaller muscles are going to be burning out first. So if you can utilize your bigger muscles, which are going to be your legs here in this uh, in, in this case, use those legs but to use those legs you got to pull them up as high as you can so you see a lot of those athletes getting through that first set of four that's awesome and then we go to the shoulder to overhead uh with the dumbbells well i'll have 21 here dumbbell shoulder to overhead the head will have to touch the shoulders just one of the dumbbell heads and have to lock out over the shoulders RJ Master looking very composed. I like that he's using a jerk. Now he can easily push these up overhead, but what he's doing is he's not forcing his shoulders to do all the work. Again, when you are working in these sort of races, if you can use your entire body to get as much maximum benefit out of it, that's gonna be the best. Even though you see like right there, that's a push press. So it is a little bit faster, but it definitely, you can start to lose your balance and lose your control. Right now, quickly looking at some of the early standings in this one. Of course, we are still in the first round of this three-round event. Taking a look at boys 16 to 17 year olds, Concha Petku and Wingard rolling up front and looking at Sabatini right there. Excellent job, very efficient, just doing the quick push jerk. And I like that. I mean, if you can do the jerk again, it is faster, but it really depends on what sort of capacity you have. Now, this is something that's making me a little bit nervous about Caroline is the fact that she's bending over. She's showing fatigue. This is round one. That's not what you want to be seeing, especially when we have two more rounds of this. Moving over quickly, so quick standings here in the First round, girls 16 to 17. Olivia Kerstetter, who we'd expect up top. Golova and Smith, your top three in that. So that's a quick update. And we will update you as this event goes along. It's three rounds. You've got 40 athletes. We'll try to keep it as straight as we can for you out there viewing. <laughs> So we get the long heat or the long round out of the way first. That was your uh, your long distance, the 1400 meter run. Uh, now we're going to shorten it up. We have a 1200 meter run, and so a similar loop to what we just had, uh, shortening it up on the distance and then shortening it up on the rope climbs. We'll have three there, and then a lower number on the shoulder to overhead as um, as they come back into that stadium. Well, they'll be back out, and again, as you saw when we started, they lined up so they can get to that same distance, the close to that stadium exit and they will come back in the far entrance we're back out on the course and now things begin to, to shrink a little bit bill just a 1200 meter run coming up here in round number two and don't forget model the gooder sunnies being provided for athletes and volunteers we thank gooder for being the official sunglasses of the noble crossfit games check out that qr code you see right there on your screen R.J. Mester just looking so composed. Now, one of the things that I really liked about that first round with R.J. came right from the run, knew exactly how to gauge that so that he can go right to the work, uh, right to the rope and go to work. But look at how he's just relaxed. Able to look around, see where everyone else is. I don't see him laboring on the breathing too much. Nice stride, just it seems nice and relaxed. And again, this is round two, and on every sort of CrossFit event that you're ever gonna be involved in, round two is always gonna be the telltale sign. Did you go out too hard, or did you go out too easy? And right now, I, I, the way that RJ is running, I think he looks pretty composed. Uh, I wanna see what he looks like when he gets to the ropes. And for a younger athlete, sometimes as you're talking about looking around, checking to see your surroundings, how far of a lead you have, it's easier for seasoned veterans that we'll see later in the open division. They know they've got a long, a long week ahead. Let's face it, when you and I were teenagers, it's it's all go sometime. You've got to think the long game here. You've got three days of competition. Yeah, but you also need to make sure that it, you know, if you get an event that goes, that, that shows up in your wheelhouse, you need to make sure you're swinging for the park, uh, swinging for the, the fences on that one. 
Sabatini still out front. We talked about her earlier. She's the overall leader right now for the females. Caroline Sabatini again out of CrossFit Vertex in Oliphant, Pennsylvania. She was second in the open, ninth in the qualifier, sixth in the semis. And again, the top female right now overall. And she is in the 14 to 15 year old female division. Nice little downhill. Nice little downhill for these athletes to kind of get that breath back. You just lean forward and let the momentum take you. Use gravity to your advantage. And a lot of times, if, if you run downhill, if you don't let that happen, that can be really taxing on you. If you're trying to control that momentum on a steep hill downward, but that's not too steep, here's where you can just try to cruise on in and, and try to catch your breath. So we're watching Roki Gudensen right now, and one of the things I like that he's doing is I don't think he's he looks very comfortable, and he's lightly chasing the pace. And the reason I think he's doing that is because he wants to be able to put the pressure on RJ, especially in that last round. And we saw a lot. If you watch the individuals yesterday. You can do great on all the long distance stuff during the race, but it really comes down to the very end. So do you have the juice at the end to really put the pressure on? Look how relaxed he looks. Very calm, nice, nice stride on that run. I can see his breathing is done with the, this, his steps. So every single one of those steps, you can see the breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Very rhythmic. He'll be trying to get on the podium, narrowly missed a year ago, finished in fourth place in the 16 to 17 year old. So this will be his final year next year. He's gonna age up. He's gonna be in the open division. We'll see how he plays out, but would like to get a podium spot as he leaves the, uh, the team division. Starting to, starting to track Mester down just a little bit. He just looks way more calm and relaxed and comfortable in that run. And this is what's going to be really interesting. What's going to happen now to RJ as he's getting passed up? How is that going to play in his head? But this is one of the things you can do. If you're chasing someone, it's nice to just kind of hang back behind them. Going to the chalk that he had in his compression shorts there and, and his nobles there, slowed him down maybe just a little bit. I think just goodness was going to pass him regardless. You can tell by the, uh, the distance he's putting ahead of him. At what point? You, you, you've competed in, in various competitions, including the games. At what point? Because you try to pick up experience, watch other competitors, pick up advantage. You tuck some chalk here. Maybe wait till you get in the Coliseum for that slow walk. Well, I like the idea that he did that. That's, that's thinking ahead, thinking about the transitions. But uh, if you look at how comfortable Rockby is, now granted, he has to come all the way down to the other side of the field where RJ gets a hop right up. You can see he's got that closer lane. But who's going to get to the rope first, and then how are they going to be as they get to those movements? Now, Rockby was pushing the tempo. Was he pushing it too much to where it's going to slow down? Down his gymnastics, we're not really sure. RJ looks just very, very strong on that rope climb. Again, went right to the rope and went right to work. But very aware of his surroundings because he, he throttled down, had the nearest lane, was able to get right onto the rope. No hesitation of looking up at the rope. Goodness, it took a couple of seconds just to look up, but Mester is getting through those rope climbs now. And again, it's a first come, first serve on the ropes, but once they get into their lanes for the dumbbell, they will have to go to the correct uh, lane. Sabatini on the ropes too. And Sabatini, your overall female leader right now, she comes out of the 14 to 15 year old division. And what I really like that Caroline has been doing is the fact that she is pushing the run. You can see she's hesitating a little bit as she's going through the rope climbs. Not that it's bad. And, you know, I, I said earlier the fact that she was bent over on uh, in that last round in between those dumbbell overheads, the shoulder overhead. I was concerned that maybe she was pushing too hard, but right. it was enough. That's what we were talking about. Race that run. So she's really pushing the run to get the distance on the rest of the field um, as she goes into these other movements. All right. Well, RJ is going to take a look around. He'll get to the dumbbells. This is the round of 15 of the shoulder to overhead. And maybe didn't stand all the way up there on that no rep. Yeah, you know, when you're doing the jerk, you need to make sure that your arms are locked out and you do stand up. And this is the difference between what Rockby is doing is he's doing that push press. So he's able to just stay up locked out with his hips. That's not going to be an issue. And look at the strength on Rockby. Wow. Rockby in the black shorts on the right side of your screen out of Reykjavik Ice. And of course, you know, Katrin David's daughter, Annie Thor's daughter. Well, now, and we're going to see it in some other other athletes here. They're starting to build their stable of teenagers over in Iceland right now. 
Sabatini takes a look back. Boy, she's got a sizable lead, not just in her division, but over all females right now. So Goodnanson back out on the run. Master going to set the dumbbells down. So Goodnanson can take advantage. You see him going out of the stadium in the background. And Sabatini under five reps remaining here in the black tank top. I'll tell you what, Sabatini just looks so strong as she's going through those sets. And I'm not going to lie. I do it kind of the same way. I'll push really hard and then I'll bend over and put my hands down on my knees just to kind of get that air back. As long as she's able to not take a long time, you know, uh, uh, in between those rests. But man, this exchange on the men's side. The way that Gudensen has just pushed so hard through the shoulder to overhead and that confidence he built in that round two run, now we have an 800 meter run. He already knows that he can run fast. One of the things I was looking at RJ is he starts looking at his watch a lot. He's thinking about a lot of other things rather than what he needs to. Um, so he needs to make sure that he can stay in that position. Saw there coming out of that camouflage shirt, that third male, that was Jennings starting to make a move, trying to stay up there. Again, just event one, but you want to try to grab it. As we see every year, you can't take for granted just day one. You want those points early on. This is a 10-person division in each division, so you've got a 10-point gap in the teams of the Masters. So you talk about valuable points even in, in event number one. Absolutely. We well, can see in the distance as Gunnarsson with that lead continuing to lead it and as we saw when they come into the stadium sometime when you watch these athletes out on the run it can maybe uh, just a little bit deceiving because Gunnarsson will have a further run once he comes back into the North Park area where Mester will have a shorter run but right now that is a huge huge gap. Yeah, Rokfi looks amazing up in the front. You can see him dropping his arms a little bit, just trying to loosen them up so he can attack those ropes right away. I love the fact that the distance he's putting on the rest of the field. Uh, you know, and, I mean, look at that. Look at how much distance. And this is a shorter run. This is the tempo and the, the, the confidence that he has in that, in that stride. Look at that. Nice and easy. Laboring just a touch but looks really, really strong. Now, again, we come down to the smallest number of rope climbs, the smallest number of the shouldered overhead. So not having any sort of an issue there, uh, but man, he is really putting that pedal to the metal. Quick look back to his right, but again, continues to keep that distance up in first place, looking for 100 points. And so is Sabatini, again, out of Offutt, Pennsylvania, second overall in the Open with six in the semifinals. And no one has been near Sabatini this entire event. I haven't seen any of the other ladies uh, that we've even been talking about because these four have been up to the front so much. Um, they have really put themselves ahead of that pack. And, man, I just, I've got to kind of wait and see where everyone else is going to, where they're all going to fall in. And as you look at her, it's not as if she looks like she's laboring on any of the runs. It's not as if she got out and, and sprinted the, the long 1400 or the 1200, just looks very comfortable, knows her pace, goes right to work once she comes back in. Uh, she's working that run. Right. I, I'll tell you, she is working that run. And again, you know, I was concerned about how she was presenting uh, her, her, you know, her body was presenting in between on the brakes uh, between the rope climbs and the dumbbell shouldered overhead, but that is not an issue. That's just the way that she recovers because she's not having any problem on this run. Took a quick look across the field, not behind <laughs> her, across the field to make sure she had enough space. Here comes Gudnitz and he'll be back in North Park here shortly. So the, you can see now he's throttling down, trying to recover just a little bit so he can go to work. He's got plenty of room. In fact, look at that. He's just about to lap some of the other athletes, but plenty of room between him and Ty Jenkins, who is in the number two spot in his uh, division. Shaking out those arms, getting ready to go. He's the first athlete overall right now out of Reykjavik. And on the lead lap, the first one back of the stadium, he'll have one of the longer walks down to the end of the field. He started close to the exit on that run when we started the event. Again, you've got a 30-minute time cap, so just a shade over 10 minutes remaining for the rest of the athletes. That just shows you how fast these athletes are really getting after it on those runs. Ty Jenkins making his way up. He's able to just come in over RJ Mester. We've seen those three athletes the whole time. And Ty was one of the guys that we've been talking about as well. You know, he was the returning champ coming in. Um, I thought he would do decent. I was a little concerned on what he would look like on the, on the rope climbs. But last year, he was third in the run when they had to do a long distance run. So you know that this is going to be a good event for him as well.
So as we watch, Jenkins on your right in the camo shirt and in the black short shirtless there is Goodens. And they're in the 16 to 17 year old division with Goodens on the left leading. As we've talked about RJ Mester, even though if you're tuning in thinking he's in third, actually he's in first in the 14 to 15. So you've got a couple of young men here trying to lock up 100 points, starting with Goodens in here at the bottom of your screen. And there's Sabatini. Uh, check that. Uh, that's your second female, Abigail Moore, out of Omnia in Denver, Colorado. She is in the 14 to 15 year old division for the females. Sabatini in the background, closing ground as well. Goodness in bottom of your screen right there, trying to get 100 points to start off the Noble CrossFit Games here in the teen division in the 16 to 17 year old. And there's Sabatini. Dude, she is just absolutely crushing it. 100 points in the bank for Rugby Goodnanson out of Reykjavik, Iceland. I mean, he deserves that lay down for sure, but he looks so calm and collected that entire race. Great, great job. And there's Jenkins, your defending champ, and here comes Master. He'll get 100 points in the 14 to 15 year old. And RJ, he just started out in the front and just did not let go. Sabatini across for 100 points, so she'll take the early lead in the 14, 15 year old girl division. And this is the round of nine when you just try to hold on for nine straight. No rep bottom of your screen. Arm got a little wide outside the shoulders. And that's one of the things you have to think about not only the strength of, you know, working those, but you have to think about the stability of holding those up, especially when you're exhausted. Coming across there is Yusuf Yab out of Jordan. He was seventh in the semifinals, so a nice finish for him. And in lane number 39, Morgan Christensen out of Idaho, Fa Idaho Falls, Idaho. He'll grab himself, I believe, 80 points. So that'll put him third in the 16 to 17 year old. And looks like Marty Play coming in from Spain. He'll grab himself 60 points. And again, just trying to figure out where all these athletes are playing when you have that many athletes at one time and all the different age groups trying to figure out who's in what division and who's coming in where. Caden Stein out of South Africa. He's unaffiliated. He'll get the OK. He'll race across. So he has completed an under the time cap. Plenty of time. He a 30 minute time cap. And he is in the 14, 15 year old division. And our next finisher in. It looks like that may have been Benjamin Concha out of Chile. Or is that no, Andre Petku out of Moscow. Same within the semifinals, excuse me. I tell you, one of the greatest things about the, especially the teen division, is we have athletes from all over the world. So that's the far lanes. It looks like lanes three and five should be Reese Littlewood, should be Lucy McGonigal down there. On your screen now, that is Trista Smith. Trista Smith making her way up out of Vancouver, Washington. And this is the athlete that Annie was talking about that was supposed to be pushing Olivia Kerstetter throughout the games. She was right behind her and caught her on two of the qualifying events in the semis. Trista there in the camo, racing across the finish line. Fourth, just off the podium a season ago. She ages up into the 16-17. That was fourth in the 14-15 division a season ago. Left side, Reese Beebe, unaffiliated. 15th place finish in the 20-person division a year ago, and she is going to make her way in just around 24 and a half minutes. And across now, here comes Olivia Kerstetter. That's who we've been talking about. One of the biggest names overall in the team division. Jacob Hepner, of course, her coach. Won it 14 to 15. We talked, Bill, well, we've got a second. She could have gone individual this year, but she's just 16. She can still come back with the teens again next year if she wants. <laughs> oh, it's so crazy. You know, and I was talking to Jacob uh, earlier this week, earlier this month, and he said, you, know, you get a barbell in that girl's hands and she can compete with the best of them in the world. So I think it's really cool that she decided to stay in the teens and, and allow herself to mature uh, and, get, and get through there. And one of the things that I noticed even on this is, 
I wasn't expecting her to necessarily win this event, but did you see how relaxed she was when she came across? Everyone else was dropping to the ground, and she just casually walked over to the fan <laughs> to get a little wind blown in her face. So well, we're definitely going to be talking about her for the rest of the, week, the rest of the weekend for sure. Benjamin Concha, an affiliate of Chile, is in. He came in, qualified ninth in the semifinals, so just made it into the heat of 10 into the Noble CrossFit Games. A little over four minutes remaining in the 30-minute cap. Again, Trista Smith. What's really impressive about all of these athletes is the fact that they, they're they so young and move so well. You know, one of the things that we lose as we get older is the ability to move correctly, but these athletes are moving the way we see your high-end athletes moving at this young age. So they keep that, oh my gosh, I can't even imagine what these athletes are gonna be like in five years, seven years. Emma Galova out of Slovakia, she's unaffiliated. She'll make her way in in the 16, 17-year-old female division. They continue to make their way in there in lane number 23. Looks like Haley Kontak and now across in the 14, 15 year old division is Ayesa Kuna out of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Yeah, you'll see more and more athletes. We'll see if anyone gets capped out. I think 30 minutes, you should get the majority of that all to make their way in. Here in the 16 to 17 year old male, that's Kyle Wingard out of Middletown, Delaware, fifth in the semifinals this year, and will stay in the 16 to 7. Janya Onorati Phillips out of Rochester, Michigan. Unbroken in the final set of nine, as most will be, and he'll jog his way across as he'll touch the pylon and Wingard is finished inside the cap. Lane number four, back to the 14, 15 year olds. That is Bergos Bjorn's daughter, another Reykjavik teenager. Yeah, they are building a farm out there for <laughs> sure. My goodness. What's great is we now have event one for these athletes and they can, they can get that out of the way. Like now they can go. A lot of times when you get that, it's that first event that you need to kind of have that slap in the face to kind of get going. Um, and, and if you finish well in that, you feel great. For these athletes that are starting to struggle as they're coming through, this is what's going to be really tough for them now is, are they able to come back from something like this? We saw all those athletes. I mean, some of them have come in 10 minutes before the time cap even started, or before the time cap finished. What's the emotional state for some of these athletes going to be if they're unable to finish or if they're really struggling here? Are they going to feel that they're going to be able to handle it for the rest of the weekend? Quickly here, we have just over a minute remaining on the time cap, and we still have some athletes running into the stadium and potentially some out on the course and we may end up running into the time cap here uh in three ways down again it is a 30 minute time cap so quickly with one minute remaining in the time cap as it stands now in the 14 15 year olds boys it's master job and simpson you look at the girls 14 15 we'll get you the update here in a second we do Take a look at Smith, Kerstetter, Golova, and the 16, 17-year-old girls. Again, you can go to games.crossfit.com. Those have your leaderboards. And in Masters and Teens and Adapts, are very important. Check those. We've got a lot going on here in these divisions today. 30 seconds remaining. Stay on it. Stay on it. Try to get in, in that time cap. Look at her just going. Pushing. There we go. Now to cross with Omnia, which is a annual contender in the team division out of Denver, Colorado. And they've got a teenager there. And 10 seconds to try to finish this up for Haley Rawl in the black. And uh, it's going to be close. <laughs> 
We'll check the chip timer. Well, you can see event number one done, and this is the long one for today, the 30-minute time cap. Of course, you had Gooden, so your overall winner. He'll get his 100 points, and a 16- to 17-year-old Mester takes the boys 14-15. to 15. Sabatini, 14-15 year-old girls. will check the rest of the numbers for you as well. And again, games.crossfit.com. That's where you'll get all of your official finishers and the placements again the 10 point scoring system in the teen division as you see sabino right there but uh saw it early in the long one and i think your leaders pace it out right try to push it on the run and trust yourself once you get back into north park and it was you know i when i was doing my research on this uh, particular event for these athletes who did well in the rope climbs, who had some sort of running ability, and it played out just like that. So we, we saw that there wasn't an issue with doing rope climbs, um, even with that extra length in there. So I saw a lot of composure, a lot of experience, even for these young athletes. Well, let's head down to the competition floor. Here's Derek Forrest. Thanks, guys. Down here with the winners, Rock V. Yes. Gunnison. Rock V. Gunnison, close enough. <laughs> close enough, right? Yes, close enough. You, you destroyed it. You pick up your third event win here at the CrossFit right. Games. Correct. You got a little bit of a rope burn, but how yeah. did this one feel? It felt great. It's always super fun to compete. I win the first event. I can't, I can't catch me. I got an emotion at the one just coming to the weekend. So I'm just super stoked to be here, first of all. And second, to win an event. That's always great. So just it's just a general super thankful and grateful to be able to be here to compete. We're always great guys. Congratulations. Thank you. Caroline Sabatini, you win this event for the 14, 15 year old division, but you have an older sister, Gigi, who podiumed here back in 2019. You pick up your first event win. Little sibling rivalry now, little bragging rights? No. Um, I look up to my sister a lot. She inspires me, but um, there's no rivalry between us. Awesome. Congratulations. Guys, back to you. Thank you very much, uh, Derek. Your winners today, and against that's the teenage division. You can go to games.crossfit.com for all the official results to keep up with our teens, adaptive, and masters, and all the finishers here at the Noble CrossFit Games. Well, you saw the future of CrossFit. We're going to talk some longevity coming up. We'll get our first masters divisions. It'll be 40 to 44, 45, 49 for the Noble CrossFit Games. Well, you can always stay fit. Don't let your age stop you. And we're going to show you the cream of the crop. Bill Grummer, we're going into the Masters, and they're going to go three ways down as well. <laughs> so we saw it. we saw it with the young kids we see here as well. 1,400-meter run down to a 1,200-meter run down to an 800-meter run. 4-3-2 on the rope climbs of that 20-foot mark, and then the shoulder to overhead, 21-15-9. The men will be going 70 pounds, the women will be going 50 pounds. We saw what it looks like if you're young. I can tell you that these older athletes, more mature athletes, will show you. <laughs> there are going to be some fireworks, my friend. Some fireworks. That's what it looks like. Let's take a look at the recipe for success. Maybe a little bit different than what we saw. The recipe may be a little bit different from the teens. No, I don't think it will be at all. You still have to race that run. So those athletes that uh, have that running capacity you can push that, push the field and try to edge some people out. And then after that, you have to know your rope. So if you did well in the rope climbs uh, through the qualifiers and you feel confident, then you got to push them. Otherwise, you need to make sure that you're going damage control and you give yourself enough rest so that you can nail those rope climbs. Four different divisions. Let's take a look at them. Men 40 to 44, and Michael Laverier will be your top seed right there in lane number 15 in the men's division, 40 to 44. As we move along here, 45 to 49-year-old men, it'll be uh, in uh, Jason Grubb out of the U.S. in lane number 37, one to watch women, 40 to 44. Kelly Friel out of the United Kingdom, Great Britain. And our final set of 10, 45 to 49. Watch out for Allie Crawford right there in lane number 26. So when I'm looking at these athletes here, you have to look at the athletes that have been around, have had the games experience, um, and they've just been in the game for a while. And Alexander Jolivet is one of those athletes. Now, he was 11th last year in the run when they had that long distance run um, and does decent in the rope climb. So I expect to see something really special from him. 
Right there is Kelly Frio, and Kelly is the Masters champion. I mean, if you talk about anyone in this division, she's been the one to beat, even though you have names like Becca Voigt-Miller in there as well. So there's going to be some, I think, really exciting things to see overall in the weekend for the 40 to 44 women. Uh, but she's definitely going to be someone to watch because she is the returning champ. We are underway as the athletes will exit the stadium. They'll come back in on that far side, but again, different terrain. You'll run some pavement. You'll run some hard pan. I don't know if you want to call it trail run, but you'll get out on a little dirt, a little grass out here. Well, and I just love the fact that everything dried up so nicely, being that it was so wet yesterday. I mean, we had to stop the event because there was so much rain. And you know, I look around, and I don't see any mud piles. I don't see anything. And it, what's really nice is I don't see that the terrain is that beat up. So we're not worried about a whole lot of ankle twists or anything like that. So these athletes are just able to get after it and uh, you know, really test their run. An important part of this, Bill, there are three different routes, the 1,400, the 1,200, the 800, and you'll see a couple of event staff out there pointing. You can see the small flags that mark each, each round, but in the athlete briefing, very important, know the, know the trail you're on. <laughs> run your course. If you run off, it's no one's responsibility. The nice thing is no one course. has to count any rounds. Right. There's no counting of laps here. You just need to make sure you get on the right track when you're going. So uh, I'm hoping that these uh, older, more experienced, wiser athletes will not have an issue there. You see the pack doesn't, doesn't split quite as wide as it did in the teen division. But again, we're starting out on the 14-year-old 1,400-meter uh, run before they get back into North Park for the rope climbs and the dumbbell snatch. And here is Grubb right out uh, on top, one of your uh, athletes to watch here today. All right, he's not an athlete to watch. He's the yeah. athlete to watch, especially in this division. I mean, he, last year when they had the long-distance run for these uh, for these athletes that had, had to do a four-and-a-half-mile run, he won that run. So when I talked about you need to race the run, this is exactly what Jason needs to do. He needs to get out to the front. He needs to try to pull some of these guys so that they can get crushed in the rope climb. That's kind of that rabbit game that he's going to play. But Jason is a consummate like just competitor he knows how to push his body and he knows how to push the feet the athletes on the floor as well about a three second lead right now for jason grubb he's been a champion last year 45 to 49 in 2019 he won it uh, the 40 44 also podiumed back in at 2018 came in in fourth place and now Starting to close the gap just a little bit, but still early on, just round number one, the 1,400-meter run here in the 30-minute time cap. A long way to go here this morning. You know, it really is, but look how close these guys are running already and that they're pushing. They're really pushing the tempo. And, you know, again, we have a lot of guys that they, they, want, to, they want to get out to the front. They want to make a name for themselves. They want to do well and start off well. Um, but they need to make sure that they don't overexpose themselves in this first round. It's 1,400 meters, yes, but you still have another 2,000 meters that you have to run. So you need to make sure that you don't you know, extend yourself too much to where you just get crushed on those rope climbs. You've got two leaders here on the left side. That is Grubb. We just talked about on the both wearing the camo tops, but in the tank top on the right side is Kane Hayes. Now, he is out of Injustice CrossFit in Rockingham, Washington. He is in the 40 to 44, while Grubb is in the 45 to 49. So actually, both of those athletes in first place in their division. But hey, Bill, it, your ego, you want to be the guy out front, even if it's you not do. your division. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> but look at the men are just really out there pushing that pedal to the metal. They, I mean, they're still all grouped up. So I don't see anyone that's overly strategizing, like, okay, let me, let me hang back just a bit. I think that the fact that Jason and Hayes uh, jumped out there to the front is really making people go like, oh, you know what? I don't get to run my normal strategic of I'll just kind of ride that ride that break a little bit these guys are jumping out there good races here you see on the far right of your screen in the sleeveless shirt that is rudolph Berger. he is trying to chase kane hayes in the tank top those two are both in the 40 to 44 and then sandwiched in between again was jason grubb the leader right now in the 45 to 49 and right behind him vlad leshkovich a 45 year old unaffiliated 
in the 45 to 49. So your top four are first and second in their division. Taking a look at some of the females now uh, making their way around. Early leaders as we take a look at Jen Ryan out of CrossFit Invictus. And uh, right behind her, we're going to stay here in the 40 to 40 four-year-old. That's going to be Kelly Marshall out of Nottingham, England in the United Kingdom. So Hayes again, the overall leader, and he is the overall leader in the 40 to 44 as well. So this is, I'm really interested to see what Jason's going to do on the rope climbs. He didn't o do overly well out of the qualifying rope climbs. Uh, we know that he was pushing the rope or the run, but I want to see if he's able to kind of mitigate, you know, that that issue. Or if it, is it a rope climb issue, or is it he just, you know, it was qualifiers and he was at home and he was just doing what he needed to do just to kind of get in. As they get into their quads in Zeus, there are four ropes. They can first come, first serve. They can choose what rope you want. Once they go over the dumbbells, they have to, if, say, they're on the far right, your dumbbells, your lanes, and your left, you've got to get back to your dumbbells. But you can get up the rope any way you want to, as quick as you can. And they said, make it definitive when you touch that crossbar. Don't leave it up to the judge. And look at how fast Kane Hayes is doing that touch right off the mat and going right back up. It sets the rope and immediately attacks that rope climb. Just trying to set his feet. I think he may have pushed it just a little much, but he's setting his feet and nice. Look, he's a tall athlete, really pulling his knees up to his chest, standing up nice and tall. Man, that was a great set of rope climbs. Something a little bit different than we've had in the past, in the past in, in competitions where there's been games, semi-finals, the, the, the regional formats, there would be a, a piece of red tape. You had to go hand over hand of that. No more. You can come down how you want, but you still have to show control coming down. Here is Hayes and the tank top on your right. And now they're closing the gap a little bit on him in his 40 to 40 year old division. And Jonathan Varela was just off to his left. And now here is Hayes again, your leader in the 40 to 40 year old, 44 year old in the tank top. Now let's just talk about those dumbbells. Those are 70 pound dumbbells for these athletes. It's 140 pounds that they have to rep up overhead. So you can see that they're breaking because it's heavy. And there oh, is the Kelly Marshall, in fact, trying to keep the sun out of her eyes. So model the Gooder Sunnies being provided for athletes and volunteers. We think Gooder for being the official sunglasses of the Noble CrossFit Games. She just ripped through those, put those Gooders back on and go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> now, Kelly was definitely one of the athletes that I'm looking at doing very well in this event. She was first and fourth out of the two World Club events that we had in the qualifiers. She was first in the run last year. She was third, so she, last year on the podium, she wants to get up to the top so i mean looking very strong using this using the strengths and the run and the rope climb so that she can work her way through these dumbbells which she's definitely having a little bit of a struggle with she want to keep an eye on her right there in the camo doing the dumbbell soda overhead that is your champion from a year ago kelly Friel. so she is within in sight of her and someone with that kind of experience knows yeah you're out in front of me but I've got I've got I've got 30 minutes to do this event, but it's a couple of podium finishers there. That's going to be a good race between those two all weekend. Look at the black shirt, Jeff. That's Becca Voigt Miller. We've seen Becca in every single CrossFit game since 2008, and she had zero issue with those dumbbells. She looked completely controlled. So no, we didn't see her coming out and you know busting down the doors on the run. But we also know that this is round number one. She knows how to compete. She's been here a zillion times. So I'm really excited expecting to see something fun from her as well. So in the 40 to 44, your podium finishers from a year ago are battling out Kelly Marshall, Kelly Friel, and Rebecca Voigt Miller. We would expect that coming in, and we've got the battle right off the bat. <laughs> as this is the 44-year-old female division on this side of the field in lanes one through 10. Goes Varela on the bottom of your screen. He is going to be out again. He is trailing Kane Hayes in the 40 to 44 year old male division. But Hayes, the early lead, he was also trailed by Berger and Varela. So those two were your top three in the 40 to 44 year old division. So here we go. So again, this is the longest round with the most running, 1,400 meters in the tw round of 21 of the dumbbell to show shouldered overhead. Now it's going to shrink a little bit down to 1,200 meters and then 15 dumbbells shouldered overhead once they get back into North Park. Kane Hayes just trying to, he's getting in that own little box, looking around to see where else anybody is. And he's like, when you look around, you don't see anybody. You can be like, okay, 
Let me relax myself. Let me start breathing a little bit easier. Not that you want to slow down. I mean, the nice thing is with these athletes, you only have to beat the ones that are here. You know, there's not another heat you need to worry about. So if you're in the front, you can kind of contain yourself and think about, like, where is everybody? What do I need to do? How am I feeling? And kind of take that assessment before you go ahead and push the rest of your uh, pieces. I don't know if you noticed there, Hayes, and watch the event staff on his right. When he came back, he just gave the quick. That's the experience, the quick point. Running that way, make sure I'm staying on the correct. <laughs> I mean, we, we laugh about it, but we all know you get in that workout fog in your head, what can happen? I mean, he just made the subtle. I'm staying on that Hey, direction. you need to make sure, make, it's, there's nothing wrong about asking, right? <laughs> that way you know you're in the right place. So you see the gap he has built now. Remember, you had, oh. you had four athletes. He took a wrong <laughs> turn. We just talked about it. And so we'll have to come back track. Fortunately for him, at this point in this test, he does have a big enough lead that that may not hurt him. We'll see if anyone closes it once we get into that final round. Well, I mean, he still didn't look like he had any issue there, but everyone else saw that. So everyone behind him, see, he's by himself. He doesn't get to follow anybody. So if he takes a wrong turn, guaranteed if the rest of the field was with them, you're going to see all the lemmings taking a wrong turn. <laughs> but uh, he's out there far enough. I'm glad he was able to make that adjustment. It really didn't lose anything out of here. Well, again, Hayes. And I think you jinxed him a little bit. You were talking about not making the right turn so many times. And then all of a sudden, our leader out in the front went, which way? I mean, come on now, Jeff. I've seen this course before. <laughs> <laughs> Quick little U-turn and get right back on track. But I like to see him. You know, he's shaking out his arms. He's trying to keep his, his arms relaxed. You can see him doing that again right there. He's going to have to go for three rope climbs coming up. And what he had was a very quick return on those rope climbs. And that was what really allowed him to get that lead, even though he had a decent run the first spot on the first set. Kane has a really good story, Bill. We've got a second here. We'll Obviously, we're, all, we're watching the tip of the spear, the cream of the crop here in this test. We're testing to find the, the fittest on earth, whether it's in the open, the team, the masters, the adaptive division. But we talk about the methodology and the reason you go into a, a CrossFit box is to you know, get your life together, whether it's health or fitness. He quit drinking five years ago. Former Australian uh, football players, three months in a CrossFit, decided I, I, I'm, I'm shutting it down. I'm, I'm turning off the, uh, the drinking, and, and I'm, I'm going to go and, and really dedicate myself to my health and, and look where he is now. And that's, that's the real reason we, I think we all get into CrossFit. Oh, man, CrossFit changes people's lives. That's what it does, you know? And that's just the methodology part, let alone these badass athletes here that are doing their thing. There we go, back out front. That's Becca out there, nice little stride. You can see her just taking it nice and easy. And she made up some distance on that run. You see she's now up in front of Kelly Friel. And that was one of those two ladies are something that I definitely are, are, are excited to watch over the whole weekend. Becca has the most experience on the game's level floor. Uh, but Kelly Friel has, in this division especially, every time she's competed, she's been on the podium. So, I mean, she has winning ex uh, winning experience. So it's really fun to watch these two really get after it. And, and you mentioned Rebecca in every game since 2008. Remember, she started back on the ranch, then went to stop hop, comes here to uh, Madison, Wisconsin. She podiumed as an open athlete back in 2011 when she was on the podium in third place. And again, comes in second last year, trying to make that next step to the top of the podium. And I think she just really is showing her enjoyment of competing. It takes a lot to train and, and constantly have that mindset, but she's just looking like she's having a, having a blast. Hayes with the hand over the head, may push it a little bit on that 1,200 meter run and may have done that, may have fought. Well, I, I, I made just a little bit of a turn there. I have to make up just a, a, a little bit of time, but he still has a substantially quick chalk up right to the rope. You know, and this is what we really want to see. When you're on that run, whether you're pushing the run or not, you need to make sure that you can go immediately from the running right to the rope climb. So tone everything down, kind of throttle down just a little bit, bring down that heart rate, and then get up on that rope. Rudolph Berger on the right side of your screen out of Chalk Dust CrossFit in Powell, Ohio. A high school wrestler it was a runner in high school, six in the semis coming into this one. That is your race and the 40 to 44 year old male division. And that is Hayes on the left, your leader, and right behind him is Berger on the right. Oh, you can see that little bit of a foot shuffle there, trying to get that up. Oh, Beckett looks like she's just out for a little run, waving at people. That's when you know you're in shape. 
little Race, recovery run. Racing and waving at people at the same time. <laughs> now, remember, after round number one in the 40, 44 year old women's division with Rebecca, that was pretty tight between Rebecca and, and Kelly. The two Kellys, Friel and Marshall, she's put a little distance. We'll see if the other two females come in to the North Park, if it's still that close. You can see them coming in behind, and I believe that is going to be uh, uh, potentially Friel right behind her. And again, look at the way she works those, those rope climbs. His arms are straight the whole time. Here's one versus two, and then back to Voight Miller. So again, totally using her legs when she goes up. You see her arm is straight, so she's just hanging. Arms are straight again, so she's not pulling with her arms. She's standing with her legs and then just using her arms to kind of guide herself up. That's just, you know, trying to keep as much tension off those arms as she can. Hayes in the tank top, your leader in this division, 40 to 44, and that's Berger off to the right side in the, I believe it's still drop that, and here comes a third on the left side. That's gonna be Jonathan Varela, former soccer player. He's had a couple of knee surgeries, but he's battled his way back. He's on the left side of your screen, but Hayes in the middle continues to lead. You have to advance the dumbbells, cannot throw them, roll them, you have to pick them up, carry them to the next line. Now he'll begin his Final round now. This is your shortest run, your shortest set of dumbbells shouldered overhead once you get back to North Park. Now look at Berger. He is just getting demolished by those dumbbells. I mean, again, 70 pounds. He was able to move through the first round pretty well, but watch, he actually has to go down to a squat to get him up. That's the first time I didn't see him squat all the way down. When I see that, that's showing to me that he, like, he's basically dusted. So round two is always the worst round. That's the telltale round of did you push too hard or not? And we're seeing that that run and those rope climbs really took the, the toll on him there for those dumbbells. Decided to keep him in the front rack when advancing him to the next line instead of most people traditionally just let him hang to the side, but keeps him in the front rack which puts a little bit more fatigue on those arms. He'll make his way out. We'll go back to the females, 40 to 44 year old, and that's Rebecca Voigt Miller. This is the set of 15. Under five reps remaining, so she has nearly completed the second round. Again, a 30-minute time cap here on Three Ways Down. And I love that she just looks relaxed. As she's doing those, she's not rushing the reps. She's staying nice and relaxed. And this is what we talked about earlier about we have to run the race. Where Becca made her move was on the run. She didn't do it on the dumbbells, even though we saw some of the other athletes were trying to really rip it out. Like Kelly Farrell was moving very fast on the dumbbells. But this is where Becca made her move, which is on that run. She'll have a decent lead over Friel, who you saw there briefly was moving her dumbbells. She's going to come on back out, and uh, there goes Rebecca Voigt Miller and Friel. Here in a few seconds, we'll make her way back out of her lane, but Voigt Miller has put some space looking for 100 points to start the week off. Kind of interesting. It's interesting that she didn't look back to see what sort of distance she had. This is gonna be the shortest run, so it's an 800 meter now for the athletes to see just how much distance she's actually had. You saw there just a second, Friel was just coming out of her lane mark or out of her gum drop, as they call those signs. And so she, that is a very substantial lead that Voight <laughs> Miller has right now. Back to Hayes, Kane Hayes, your overall leader and your leader in the 40 to 44 year old division. Third back in 2019. He was on a team in 2017 uh, CrossFit and Justice CrossFit who finished 31st at the games. But he is looking to stand on the podium for a second time and try to grab the quick 100 points this morning. What's impressive with Kane is you can see that he is he's laboring. He has his hands up on his head. He's trying to shake his arms out. The way he's breathing is a little bit different than it was that last round. He knows it's a shorter run, but he needs to make sure that he doesn't overexpose himself so that again, he can make, he can really get after those rope climbs and those dumbbells. He can't overshoot that red line right now, but he's riding it, he's riding it tight. I believe that's Berger that was still behind him, but you can tell he's closed the game. We'll double check and see indeed if that was, but Hayes makes the turn. Now he's looking back, he will check, because in a shorter run, 800 meters, he still have the turn, so he, as we get a wider angle, he has still a substantial lead. Uh, he's definitely safe. Um, again, you know, in, what he doesn't want to do is rush himself into those rope climbs. He's been great on the ropes. He's been great on the dumbbells, but I think it's because he hasn't really been pushed. He is pushing the run, 
but he doesn't want to go over that red line and then have to sit there on the rope or on that pad waiting to kind of recover. And I think whether you're doing a test like three ways down or uh, any other 21-15-9, of course, our, our, our most famous, you know, is Fran. You, you want to have enough of the tank that you do not have to break the, the set of nine. Oh, That's absolutely. The, do the nine and go. And Rebecca Voigt Miller again, the overall leader in the females, and right now uh, the overall leader in the 40 to 44 year old. Coming in off the run on the first run, she was uh, in third, but she passed Friel, she passed Kelly Marshall, and is dominating this test right now. You know, and it looks like she's just running so e easy. It's just almost like a shuffle. But what that is is that pose running. You know, she's not landing on her heels. She's not trying to pull with her legs. Um, she's just trying to keep herself moving forward and trying to let gravity kind of work to her favor. A couple of females right there in the 45 to 49-year-old division are back in. Here is Kane Hayes. A couple of rope climbs, nine dumbbells, shoulder to overhead, and a sprint to the finish line is what he has left. As you guys can see, majority of the dumbbells move forward to that third. As you talked about, we'll chalk up, get his breath, because at all costs, you want the nine straight to finish things out. <laughs> well, I like that he's able to get right to the rope, and you know he had this in the last round as well, where he was that one rope climb ahead uh, of Berger, when Berger really made that push. But you can tell he's, he's, he's tired. He's pushing that line, which is great. You're supposed to be. You're supposed to be running it down all the way to the end as you come across that finish line. Moving over, that's Mike Kearney. He's in the 45 to 49-year-old division, and looks like he has got the lead right now. Of course, we saw Jason Grubb, the athlete, to watch here in this division. But it's Mike Kern out of Garden City CrossFit, a 46-year-old second a year ago. So that'll be a nice battle between Kern and Grubb all week. Mike Kern, got to give him a little shout out. He's a wrestler as well, wrestling in college. So I, I, you know, I got a little special place in my heart for those wrestlers. He actually hit me up and he said he's fired up about this weekend. So I'm looking for some big things from him. Well, I remember last year, broke his hand warming up, finished out the game, still found himself on the podium. Still outstanding, finished second. Here is Hayes trying to hang on to this set of nine. He'll have to break, but he's got a big enough lead that will not cost him. Boyd Miller on the right side of your screen, leading the 40 to 44 year old women's division. Beautiful, beautiful touch by Becca. Look at that. Hayes on the left side of your screen. He's riding the line right now. Those dumbbells have to stay within the shoulder when you get him. He, he got it and he will make his way on the cross. He wins the entire event through the two divisions, but he'll get 100 points, 40 to 44 year olds. So a nice, nice start to the week here at the Noble CrossFit Games for Kane Hayes. And here's Rebecca Boyd Miller trying to grab her 100 points. You know, I have to say this, not only a great job, Becca, for doing what you're doing in this event, but remember all the guys that were in that lead heat? We had like 12 guys and we didn't see any of the ladies. Who's sitting in the number two spot overall? <laughs> Oh, Becca. Becca Voigt Miller. Grubb will get in. We saw Kern, but Grubb, his experience pays off. Looks like Grubb will get the 100 points. Voigt Miller is across. She'll grab her 100 points. So Hayes, we believe Grubb unofficially. And Voigt Miller, your three winners thus far in the different age groups. Hayes and Voigt Miller in the 40 to 44, and then Grubb in the 45 to 49. You know, Grubb did exactly what Grubb does, which is perform on game day. Uh, I was a little concerned on what the rope climbs were going to look like for him, but he did not have an issue there, and he really did what he needed to do on that run. Great push by Grubb, and I tell you what, you know, coming in as the two-time champ, he's got the target on his back, and he knows that, but uh, that just told everyone that he's here to play. Taking a quick look here, just to update you across in the... 40 to 40 year old Hayes, Berger, and Levery are your top three across the other divisions right now. Kern and Grubb with second. So in that division, it goes Kern, Grubb, Leshkovich are top three, and they are in trying to scan this. And again, you can go to games.crossfit.com. That's going to have all of our official finishers here in these divisions. As you see, uh, Jolivet make his way across. Voigt Miller and Friel, one and two, are in in the 40 to 44 year old female. And we're going to be talking about those two ladies this entire weekend. 
Kelly Marsh right here still having some issues with those dumbbells. Again, look at the stability she's trying to work on. She's working those up overhead. Well, remember Kelly Marsh in the first round was the first one back in the stadium, and she actually led Voight Miller and Friel, but they made up the ground over the long haul. It's a long, long event. Coming up on five minutes remaining in the time cap. It's a 30-minute time cap. Lane number 15 looks like Michael Leverrier out of Quebec. Uh, pardon me, that's Aaron Billfeld out of San Antonio, Texas. Third in the semifinals. He was on the team in 2017. So Aaron is across in lane 16. Now here comes Marshall. And she even went with a split jerk on that. And one of the things, you can split jerk, push jerk, push press, whatever. Got to get those feet back. But that was a great time for her to finish. That's not going to cost her because in her, no, her division, no one was to the left or the right. But how many times have you and I done broadcasts and we've seen multiple events? Do not pull up till you get to that line. You, you never know who just may be. And I think she knew to the left and the right she was saving this, but you don't want to take anything for granted. Oh, I, I, I hear you. <laughs> Here's La Sala crossing the 44-year-old 40, 40, age group. Or pardon me, the 45 to 49 unaffiliated out of the U.S. He was 30 a year ago, four-time games athlete and king. <laughs> a collapse across Justin King at a Walker, Louisiana. Go back to the 45 to 49 year old division. There is Ali Crawford. Second a year ago in this division, trying to climb to the top of the podium. You know, we talked about her earlier, knowing that she had decent rope climbs with the third and the seventh out of the quarters and then a second of the run last year. Uh, so I was expecting to see her do really, really well here. You know, it was hard with this big mass group to see where everybody is, but it's nice to know that she's leading the pack right now in an event that she should be doing just that. And she's got some stout competition in that pack as well on the 45 to 49 year old division. You got some experience in this division like Karen McAdam, a six time athlete here, but it's gonna be Allie who's gonna make her way across. Podium finisher a year ago, looking to get back up there this season. Great finish by Allie. And again, just looked real composed all the way through in those dumbbells. Uh, and that's one of the things, that, that last, that second to left, second to third round of those dumbbells. It's not that it's a difficult movement, but all of the other work that you did, all of the endurance and stamina work that you had really shuts down all the stabilizers. So it's really cool to see her look so calm and collected on that last round. We go back to the 45 to 49 year old grouping. Jogging Cross looks like uh, Calio out of Finland at 47 years old. Ninth in the semis, got her way in and she'll come across. Grab 90 points unofficially. Again, the official standings and finishings will be on games.crossfit.com. Again, that was Maratuli Calio. We'll stay in the 45 to 49 year old Marina Novelli out of Italy, unaffiliated. She's been to the games twice back in 2017 18, unofficially. She'll grab herself 80 points, unofficially third here in the 45 to 49 year olds. Under two minutes to go in the cap. Right in the middle of the field. So this should be the 45, 49 year old, one of the 45, 49 year old females making her way up, looking to grab 70 points would be an unofficial fourth place finish. 90 seconds to go in the 30 minute time cap. Yeah, it's Karen McAdam who we were talking about just a little while ago. Oh, excuse me. Jessica Manfro out of Peekskill Strength CrossFit in Peekskill, New York. Fourth a year ago, she'll finish fourth in this, so she is going to be a threat to get on that podium. And oh, she'll yeah. come in and she'll grab 70 points. Yeah, she definitely is one of those athletes that if there's a, an event that's going to be in her wheelhouse, she's going to knock it out of the park and definitely throw a wrench in the rest of the leaderboard. Uh, We're going to have some athletes to cap out here. Still out on the course. They've got 50 seconds to get back into the North Park Arena. That is so easy. 
out of Chandler, Arizona. Came in as your, your winner in the semifinals, too. Athletes, you've got 30 seconds. Quiroz out of Brazil, unaffiliated. Sarah Quiroz, six in the semifinals. At this point, 15 seconds to go. You got to you know, grip it and rip it in a quick sprint. <laughs> <laughs> You've got any got chance to finish seconds. the event. Ten well, get seconds. whatever reps you can. Yeah. I mean, again, it's really hard to tell who all is on the field with you, but whatever rep you can get, it's going to put you up a rest, you know, against the rest of the field. Quick note, if you're out on the course, you do have to finish the run. They'll have a corral finish so they can do the placing if you did not get back on the run. Just a caveat in there. And again, they receive one of the athletes. And again, what they'll do is when they come in, they'll just place them in a line. That's where your finish is going to be instead of trying to go locate them later on the course. It'll just be a corral finish for those still left over the cap. Well, some great races as Hayes pulled away in the 40 to 40 year old male division, Rebecca Voigt Miller. She Sit out a statement as you would expect to the women's 40 to 44 year old division. In the meantime, let's head down to the competition floor with Derek Forrest. For the 40 44 year old division, uh, Kane Hayes, easy work in this one, or at least you made it look easy, dominated the field. You were on the podium a couple of years ago. What's it like to start the weekend with an event win? Yeah, it's really good. I was so happy that it was a run to start. No real skill, you just had to work and settle in and get the nerves out of the way, and it definitely wasn't easy. <laughs> On the women's side of things, Rebecca Voigt Miller, you said this one hurt. You were able to separate yourself after coming off the dumbbell in the run. How does your experience help you with this? I think the biggest thing for me in my experience is that um, you don't have to go out super hard right in the beginning. You can kind of assess how you're feeling and then just try to accelerate through the end. Awesome, congratulations guys, back to you. Thank you very much, Derek. And those are your winners in the 40 to 44 year old division. For all the official results and all the divisions, go to games.crossfit.com. We're going to reverse it and go 35 to 39 year olds. They're coming up next here at the Noble CrossFit Games. the North Park of the Align Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin for the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. I'm Jeff Bryant alongside Bill Grunner. And again, we continue here in event number one, three ways down. Now we're going 35 to 39-year-old division that was added several years ago. You know, and I just love this event for these athletes. We get some big names to do this grinder. And we start off with that 1,400 meter run, four rope climbs of 20 feet, and then the shoulder to overhead. Then we just bring it on down, lower that run, drop those number of rope climbs. Then we have that 21, 15, nine on the dumbbells. And most of the athletes here, they have just come out of the open division as we take a look uh, at how it is going to line up. You saw there 35 to 39 year olds here. They're all going to be in the middle lanes. Let's take a look at our recipe for success. Well, as we have seen, the run is going to be very important. So you need to race that run. And you, if you have the run in your in your wheelhouse, you got to push it because that's going to really push the rest of the field. If you can wrap it, some of the other athletes out there, that's going to be huge. And then you got to know your ropes. If you're good at the rope climbs, get moving on the rope climbs. If you're not very good at the rope climbs, make sure you throttle back just a touch on the run so that you can get right to work when you enter that stadium. A lot of big names. They line up there in the center of the field at North Park. And again, this is just the 35 to 39 year olds. Let's take a look at the lanes as we go to the men. And that's Sam Dancer in lane number 25. We'll keep an eye on him. Yeah, Sam Dancer for sure. I mean, he's one of the biggest names out there and he's one of the biggest guys out there. Come on. And then China Cho, it's an it's a easy, easy out there to look at in the women's division. She'll have some competition, but we'll see what China Cho has in store. Seven time. It just CrossFit athlete. It just makes me feel old to know that she's <laughs> in the master's division when I've seen her so many different times. But on some of the athletes that you have to watch, uh, uh, Justin Aarons is one of those guys that I think is going to do very well in this. Now, 
he did so well first and fifth out of the road climb events in the semis in the quarters and then just is a decent runner as well so i'm expecting to see him do really well and push the rest of the field um in this event and then china when you say rope climbs in any time frame in any games in any regionals china always wins so here's a rope climb event i think china's going to do just fine in this and i'm really excited to watch her just blow the doors off the field Guaranteed athletes to watch. We've taken a look at a couple of them already, but there are some other names out there. You saw Roy Gamboa out there, and there's going to be some competition for China, of course, in the women's division as well. You never know as you take a look at Sam Dancer. And right, even right there out there in the front, Kerry Kenny, who's been around in the games and have been on teams as well. So, again, this is that division that maybe you're not one of the top athletes in the open division anymore, but you're still a name. And not only are you a name, but you also have a lot of experience. So this it's a very interesting division because of what you have in there. And they really, they, you know, spike the punch bowl. There's a nice <laughs> amount of money for these athletes to win. So they really want to keep those big names out in the floor, out in the field. Craig Kinney with the master stash there, the camo shirt right in the middle. You'll remember, since this is a 30-minute time cap and kind of a grinder, 2014, the 50s. He was one of the few males in the regionals in 2014 to finish that yeah. event, that test. That's right. I mean, the guy can go to work for sure. You know, and then when you're looking across the rest of these guys, I mean, like, you know, Sam Dancer, he's, he is such a massive personality, let alone just a massive body out there. So um, seeing a big athlete, a big, strong athlete, more known for his strength and weightlifting out there in the front is really cool. See, uh, Joshua Rundy leading things out of the black top, actually uh, sitting in second, but he is one of the early leaders out front here. Then again, this is the 35 to 39-year-old division is that Tucker with the lead shirtless there in the gray shorts just in front of Burundi in the black shirt. And we have a pretty hefty split between the men's group and the women's group. Uh, they're pushing that. I mean, they're definitely pushing the tempo. And that's one of the things with these younger athletes is that there's a lot of ego that's involved with these younger athletes. So they need to make sure that, okay, yes, we're young, we're strong, and we're, we're, we're out here at the CrossFit Games, but you have to run your race. We saw what Becca did, and she even said it. I mean, that's, that's the voice of experience right there. You don't need to win round one. In fact, usually in a multiple round event, if you win round one, you're going to end up last. So run your race with the way you need to feel good push your tempo just to where you know your red line is going to be um and then get to work on those rope climbs and dumbbells overhead sam dancer checking that uh that watch on his wrist he'll have a pace and you'll see several athletes that do that they'll want to maintain their pace throughout don't get caught up in the in, in the hype and everything that's don't let someone pull you along and get out of your pace <laughs> And it's hard, man. It's hard, especially when you're a, you're a young, big, strong athlete. You don't want someone to get ahead of you. Um, so it takes a lot of uh, mental fortitude to keep yourself in check and make sure you're running your race instead of running the race. There you take a look at the male division, 35 to 39-year-old again. We just have the grouping of 20 athletes here in this heat in event number one and the 35 to 39, the men and the women here. So just a, actually a 19-person heat as we're going with nine in the 35 to 39-year-old women. Can you believe that it was a rain delay yesterday? <laughs> Do you see anything out there? All I see is nice green grass, nice dry ground, nice, nice terrain for all the athletes to work on. And again, we talk about how important that is. I really thought that with all the bike riding and all the rain and everything yesterday, that this would just be all churned up, and it's just not. So Marundi uh, is still out up front, battling in Sam Dancer, cruising along in third. And there's China Cho. There's your top female right now, and she is leading the women. And again, look how relaxed China is. It, one of the things that the rest of these ladies, they know, they, they want to stay as close as they can to China on the run because on the ropes, again, like if history is going to repeat itself, China and ropes are deadly to the rest of the field. So they need to kind of do what they need to do to stay as close as they can on that run or really try to, you know, blow by her if possible on the dumbbell overhead. I just, I just don't know if it's going to be possible. Well, Cho has one competitor behind her, but probably I would say about an 8 to 10 second lead. Which may not sound like that much, but in running it's, it's, it's pretty substantial. 
They make the turn. That's your grouping of three for the males of the 35 to 39 year old. Again, is Marundi out front. And here's Sam Dancer maybe making just a little bit of a push before we get back in the stadium, trying to close the gap just a little bit. And now they'll be back onto the pavement. So they will be getting close to the Alliant Energy Center. And they'll run in the opposite tunnel that they came out of. They'll keep that on the pacing on the lanes. As Dancer takes a little bit of an inside line. Some experience, cut off a little bit if you can, and Dancer will make a move ahead of Marundi. That's a veteran move, the inside line. <laughs> He's like, look at the pylons out over there. Why do I need to run so far outside? Oh, you got to make that straight line as much as possible. But this is where it's going to be really interesting now. So, we, you know, we talked about how hard are you going to push the run, and are you able to go right to work when you get to those rope climbs? Um, and what are you able to do after that point? Dancer will throttle down and... He'll touch the rope, and so there's a minimum work requirement, and we'll see if something may be going on with, with Sam Dancer here. But he's going to touch that, looks like. He may go ahead and sign a scorecard. So, you know, what we heard was that he, when he was doing some pull-up stuff, that he may have done something to a bicep tendon, and so we are hearing that he may or may not be withdrawing, but he decided he wanted to run, so it was... We wanted to see what he was going to do. Comes out on the run, and again, the minimum work requirement is he does have to get to that rope, so he did just that. Now, is he going to withdraw from the rest of the competition? We don't know, uh, but at least he did his minimum work requirement here in this event. Here comes China Cho. She'll make her way back into North Park. And again, continuing, as you see, no one else in the tunnel building that lead evermore. Again, continuing to just literally run away from the rest of the pack here in round number one. Look at that. Look at that game face on China. Doesn't look like she's breathing hard at all. Doesn't look like she's labored at all. And then, you know, get her on the rope, and then here she goes. Now, this is one of the things. China not only has individual experience. She's been on, you know, Rich Froning's Mayhem team and won a championship there. Uh, has done just amazing anytime they've had seen ropes or any sort of event like that when uh, it was in the regionals. But look at her just doing what she does just going to work and she just seems so relaxed. Like she's almost so relaxed that it makes this look easy and it makes it look like it's not very hard and that is not the case. <laughs> Here is Burundi. So now he is your overall leader in the 35 to 39 as Dancer and that's probably why he throttled up if I'm going to do the run. I'm going to Look, absolutely. There's a chance. When we talk about the gym, I'm going to win the warm. I'm not a runner, but I'm going to win this warm up. And get back into the gym. Back into the box here is China Cho. Back up the rope. Get four rope climbs here in round number one. And Burundi back out after his 21 dumbbell shoulder overhead, and he's starting to put some space between himself and the field as well in his division. And Marundi, it was all about those dumbbell shoulder to overhead. We saw that uh, Cerna had a little bit of an issue uh, controlling those and actually had to break it up, but Marundi was, didn't need to break it up. So a lot of strength and stability in those shoulders. You know, these guys were basically neck and neck on the run, the whole run. Uh, the rope climb's the same thing, but look at the distance just on the dumbbell alone that he was able to put between him and the rest of the field. Model the Gooder Sunnies being provided for athletes and volunteers. We thank Gooder for being the official sunglasses of the Noble CrossFit Games and want to have those on today in this beautiful morning that we had. You talked about, hell, no clouds in the sky. Just a nice day to go out for a run. China Cho on her set of 21. And now the rest of the athletes have closed the gap a little bit, but China was the first off the rope. She has less than five reps, so she's maintaining the lead here. She'll stop with under five reps remaining. But she's relaxed. Yeah. You saw what she looked like on the run. There was no issue on the run, no issue on the rope climbs. So she can take a little bit of a break here. Again, keeping that heart rate down just enough so that she can, is in control of what her body's doing. And those are beautiful. She will finish and advance the dumbbells. She'll begin round number two. We saw Sam Dancer come in first on the run, touch the rope, signed his scorecard. But with a little bit more information on that, let's go out to the competition floor and Derek Forrest. Yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah, I just spoke with Sam Dancer, and uh, he told me that earlier this week he sustained a bicep injury, so he is going to withdraw. That's why you saw him run up to the rope and touch it. He said he's going to make a more formal announcement on his social medias later today, guys. Thanks a lot.
lot, Derek. You hate that because I know that he put a lot into uh, competing in this Masters division this year. You uh -huh. hate it for him. I think, honestly, he looked in better shape than he did when he was actually competing as an individual. I mean, I, I watched him on his in, on his uh, social media and what he was able to do and the weights he was throwing around. And I tell you, I, I was excited to watch him compete. So in the women's division, it's Cho Lapinen. Bingston, those are your top three unofficially with Tucker and Pravrati, fourth and fifth. So that's the way it looks right now, the 35 to 39 year old women. Quickly in the men, it's Burundi, Aarons, and Cerna. And Kenny and Gimbo, unofficially your top five right now through the first round. Burundi just looks so, look at how relaxed he is. Nice, just kind of wheeling down the hill here on this run. First run, he ran it. Uh, 15 seconds ahead of uh, most of the, well, it's Cerna was right behind him. Dancer came in and then it really spread out. It was a 15 second gap between those top three and then here comes four, five, and six into they, the stadium. You know, honestly, uh, Marundi should be thanking Sam <laughs> for pushing the tempo. I yeah. mean, that's one of the things that Sam was doing. I don't know if anyone knew he was gonna do that or not. Um, you know, we obviously didn't know that. We, I was excited to see him out there, but he pushed the tempo, which I think push Morundi to get out towards that front. Now, granted, he's a great runner because I don't see that that push didn't hurt him at all. I mean, he looks comfortable right now. However, look at the gap that he's had with the rest of the field. You know, Cerna was right in the mix with those guys, but we don't see Cerna around right now. So uh, that was a great gift that, that Dancer gave uh, Morundi. And let's face it, too, and you've talked about this in other events that you and I have done in CrossFit, you just like the competitor. Look, if, if all I can do is the run, I'm going to win that run. He came in and took that line. I'm going to be in first place at some point. Here comes, speaking of first place, China Cho. And, and she just looks relaxed. Look at that. You know, we talked about, you know, how close the other ladies were on the dumbbell uh, shouldered overhead. And, I mean, they were making up a little bit of distance. But, again, I think she was just running out that first round. She knows how she feels. It's round number two, this is the check-in round. You know, do I have enough gas in the, left in the tank to either go, you know, bump it up a little bit or just kind of throttle back? But she just looks like she's in complete control. She had a 13-second lead on that first run as well. So, she that was a pretty healthy lead. Mirandi back on the pavement. So, we'll be coming back into North Park here in just a moment. Shaking out those arms, getting ready to do work on those rope climbs. So he'll be into North Park Arena, and that wraps up the 1,200-meter run. It'll be three rope climbs and into 15 dumbbell shouldered overhead. Burundi uses his arms. He should have some strength. Burundi, a drummer for Pop Evil. <laughs> slinging the sticks, slinging the dumbbells. <laughs> Look at that. Now, you know, we haven't really talked about it that much, but that's a 20-foot rope climb, and it doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal, but when you add five feet onto a rope that most people have, most gyms will have a 15-foot rope um, in their gym that they, that they get to work on. If you're not used to doing that extra five feet, it is a shock to your system. It's a whole other pull and a half that you have to deal with. And, you know, if you if you kind of add all that up together versus all the rope climbs that you have to do, it's not 4-3-2. It ends up being more like five rope climbs, four rope climbs, three rope climbs overall. So you can't discount that extra length on that rope. Well, and let's face it too, you have your crash pad here. We want to keep the athletes safe. You're adding five feet to the rope. Usually if you're, if you're in your local box, you know the rope. I'm going to jump. I know in my head how many pulls I need to make and now you're going to have extra pulls. Now how many pulls do I have right. to do? And you're not on a rubber mat. You're not going to get quite a, as big of a jump as you do off the crash pad. Oh, you barely get a jump out of that crash pad. I mean, you go to really push down, and you'll maybe get like a two-inch jump. So we saw some of the other athletes really not jumping up at all. They're just trying to get a nice big reach, and then they'll bring their hands up. But man, he is manhandling the dumbbells. <laughs> he will advance them, and he'll be out for round number three. 
And he is the only athlete. He was done with the rope. You can see a clean field behind Barundi. No one else even on the dumbbells right now. I tell you what, he's he has just done incredible work on that run. I mean, there's Cern right there with the ponytail right next to him on the right. And man, look at look at the difference between those two athletes. So right now you'll have unofficially, it looks like Marundi, Cerna, and you saw Brian Wong coming in to the crash pad to get ready for his three rope climbs. Here comes China Cho about to make her way back inside. Again, had a 13 second lead off the first run and looks like she has put a lot more distance on the shorter, the medium run here in the round of three, the 1200. Yeah, just, just. Uh, you would think this is round one, the way she looked, the way she's presenting. Here comes China Cho. Very smart. Look at you can see she's getting that chalk out of her out of her grips there. Again, I really like that. I, you know, we've seen a lot of athletes carrying chalk somehow. Um, and with the wristbands, what's great about those is she has that is it's not only chalk to help with the grip, but it keeps the sweat from running down your arms because it's hot. It's humid out there. So you keep that sweat off your palms and it allows the chalk to stay on your hands so you can get through these rope climbs. Definitive tap on that crossbar. No problem. She continues to build on that lead as Gamboa. Nice big reaches with those arms. You know, if you're if you're in one of the lanes closest to the entrance too, that allows you as an athlete, whether you're in first or second or third, if you're ahead of someone, you can take a look. She took a deep breath. She took a quick look. Let me make sure no one's coming in the entrance here. I'm still with a very healthy lead. You've got a clear line of sight to where everyone else is. Well, again, you just have to win. I mean, if you win, if you lap everybody because you're pushing so hard to do all that, that's great. Or if you beat them by a foot and a half, you still win. So she only really needs to do what she needs to do. And, and again, there aren't any other heats to worry about. You know exactly who you're competing with because they're all here on the floor. So if you have time to like, just like what she's doing, walk herself from the rope over to the dumbbell so she can go to work here. And again, you know, do what you need to do on that last round. But she doesn't have anyone that's pushing her right now. China. Very steady round of 15. And smart play, no read. You don't need to go 15 unbroken no. here with that lead. It's a nice, a nice even split. Eight reps down, seven to go for her. Did really well on her run pacing. 6.13 on the long run. The medium went 5.57. There is Marundi back out as well with a very substantial lead. And Marundi went 5.08 on the long run, 5.02 on the short run. So paced down a little bit, as you'd expect, as fatigue starts to hit. But... He's got a big enough lead, doesn't need to push it right now either. Well, and I think it, it's not the fact that fatigue is setting in, but the fact that, like, he doesn't need to push it. You know, uh, it's not to say that you aren't racing, but if you're not getting any, anything extra by pushing the tempo here, other than, like, I mean, Mike, why? I mean, all, he can breathe and completely relax right now. Not only does he have the confidence now knowing that he's in that top spot, and I mean, you really, the 100 points is sitting right there for him to grab, but he just needs to kind of ride it out, let himself cool down, bring the nerves down, finish strong, and just enjoy your 100 point win. Gonna come back in for a couple of rope climbs and nine dumbbell shoulder to overhead. And it as well. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that. <laughs> Making it look easy, that's exactly what he's doing. I mean, I guess it all looks really easy when right. you're all by yourself, too. You know, everyone else is battling in the back, and you're just, oh, I'm out for a run. Got to be a good feeling to come into the, the empty stadium as the overall leader. And, and then, no, you got a chance to lap some people. Oh, Stan Hope's finishing up his round of 15 on the dumbbells. Oh, there's your competitor right to the rope. Got his breath back on the walk from the entrance to the rope. Got a couple of these, nine dumbbell shoulder to overhead and make his way on to the finish line and 100 points and an event win here. Keep an eye now on the male side. As I felt as if to finish this third and final round. Nine reps left. I mean, it's got to be the greatest feeling to be in a race at the world championship of the CrossFit Games here in your division, and no one is around you. I mean, you're literally just, 
I mean, what do you want to call that? Matt Frasering? <laughs> you know, Tia Tumin? Like, what do you want to call that when you're just crushing everybody around you? No one's even around you. Same thing with China. It's like they're running the race by themselves. Well, here's where you get a chance. We don't encourage this usually in the races that are a lot tighter. We've seen some people do it. But when you're the only one, I'm putting that ninth shoulder Enjoy overhead, it. and I'm making that highlight reel walk <laughs> to the finish line. I mean, you got to enjoy the you got to enjoy the win, you know. And this is the I mean, not how often do you get the opportunity to just soak it in and feel that, you know? That's great. Now the adrenaline push jogs it on across. 100 points for Josh Marundi in the 35 to 39 year old division. Whoa, that was a great finish. As Gampola able to finish out his final two row climbs and now makes his way to the Remember what Gampola is a games veteran. You hear that in the background. He's wrapping up his rope climb. 1907.1. That's the unofficial time for Josh Burundi. Again, all the official results. Is we obviously have a lot of divisions and teams, masters, adaptive. Go to games.crossfit.com. And there's a very familiar name out of Abilene, Texas. So Rogelio, you know him as Roy Gamboa. Yeah, just, you know, we've seen him in so many different aspects on the in the open division for the individuals and the team division. And then now here in the masters division he's one of these athletes and again i'm happy to see here because that's it's the history of our sport um that's allowed to be able to keep on continuing so when you got when you have guys like gambo and kenny and dancer and, and and those names that are coming in and playing in the game still um it really raises the level for these mathers athletes and for these divisions uh, had a quick race there. We thought it was going to be close, but it's Nick Roberts that got ahead. So it's Marundi Gamboa Roberts. One, two, three. Unofficially, here's Craig Kenny is going to come in in fourth. He'll grab 70 points. Again, a 10-point scoring system in the Masters of 10 athletes in China Cho. About to come back into North Park and get her 100 points. You know, and still holding that really nice uh, forefront landing. Look at that. Pose landing on that on that uh, four strike uh, front foot striking, just beautiful setup. Hasn't broken down at all. I mean, you kind of wonder, you know, her and her and Freddie moved out to Hawaii, so they're living out there. And if you're living the beach life, are you still running a lot? Are you still training really hard? Apparently, you still are. Like that's awesome. The thing in you, you live somewhere like Hawaii, you, you have no excuse not to get outside and be active. Well, I don't know if I'd be running. I think I would just be surfing the whole right. time. <laughs> that was a race in the first round, but John and Joe has left no doubt after round number one. I mean, the, the, the notch on her belts of rope winning events. She just gets to add another one to the little link there. Joe, one more big pull. Joe will finish out the run and the rope climbs. Only nine reps remaining for Joe. So China jogging up. Again, nine shoulder, dumbbell shoulder to overhead here. That'll finish things off. Get across the finish line, get 100 points, and be the leader in day number one for the Masters in event number one. Well, she's definitely making a, uh, putting her foot down for the rest of the field. Hey, guess what, you guys? This isn't playtime. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here to, I'm here to do battle. Julian Cerna, who is playing with the leaders early, fell off the pace. Cerna is going to come across. He's going to end up seventh. But remember, he was in that grouping of three early on in round number one. Yeah, I think he may have uh, got suckered into that Sam Dancer rabbit uh, first, first run. I believe that was eight, and that it was. There's nine, and Scholl. Jogging across the line and 100 points for China Cho. Man, talk about execution of an event all the way around. Granted, those are all, I think, elements that she's decent in. So she's you know, good runner. We know she's got some decent strength, obviously good on the ropes, but just played every single piece great. Ran her run, did what she needed to do on the rope climbs. Nice breaks and very strategic breaks on the dumbbell. Um, that's experience right there. Experience at work. Just a fraction over 23 minutes to win event number one. Oh, good job, brother. 
And looks like Giannis Papadopoulos out of Greece in on the 35 to 39 year olds. And 30 minute time cap here at event number one for the Masters. That's Bingston out of Sweden. Three time regional athlete, two time individual. Was on a team back in 2014. She's been in the game for a while. Back on the left, it's Lappinen. Emilia Lappinen out of Finland. Those are the games in 2019 and 2021. Walking across that time was Bingston. She will take second place. And back up to Lappinen. She'll come across the beach and gets 90 points. Lapinen's going to grab 80 points, so a top three finish. Very, very good start to the week. I just think that's great when you see an athlete that's able to go from the individual competition, the open individual competition, in one year and go immediately right into the Masters division. Uh, I mean, it really raises the stakes for this division as a whole. Uh, makes it really, really exciting. I want to see some big things by Amelia as well. Couple in the middle lanes trying to finish things off, grab some points. There's still 60 points there for the females. Coming up in fourth place is Tucker is going to jog across for the females in the 35 to 39 year old. Anita Tucker, she was third a year ago in this division. So that'll get her fifth here in event number one. See, it's starting to heat up out there. A lot of these athletes trying to get in front of those fans, get some water, dump up over their heads. Okay. Now you're going to start to get in the back cab. El Debs is in. Still El Debs out of Simply CrossFit in France. And I thought she was going to do a lot better. She was kind of trying to hang with China in the beginning. Um, you know, she's got some decent ropes, rope climb ability as well, and she was sixth in the run last year. So I was really expecting her to kind of hang with China a little bit more. But man, China really put the paddle down. You can find the athletes now. They'll find that, that shade quickly now when they're getting off. <laughs> you talk about it, you know, at 9 o'clock when we started things off this morning. I mean, that was an hour, over an hour and a half ago. Now things start, as you mentioned, start to warm up, especially out there on that turf. Long walk here for Pravati. Anita Pravati, out of Sao Paulo, Brazil. CrossFit Lahuit, six in the semis. She's got a lot of experience, too. A year ago was on Formex Brazil's team. Won the Brazil CrossFit Championship. First Brazilian team to qualify for the games and now takes on the Masters division. In all black, bib number 356, and she is She'll make her way in under the cap. Event number one. It's going to be good enough for six here in right event number one. Three minutes, a little under three minutes left here. 30 minute time cap on event number one. And again, for runners that are still on the course, if you get capped out on the course, you've got to finish the run. And we're not talking about stopping and just walking on an end because they're <laughs> going to corral your finish, which means if you come in before me, they're going to put you in a line, and that's going to be where you're placing. They're not going to take a snapshot of the course behind the stadium and, and say that's where you finish. So you've got to finish that run if it's over the cap. I, I actually really like the fact that they make you finish the run. I mean, everyone's doing the work at that point. Um, because otherwise, how would you do that? You know, one one point for the run. It's like that run was 800 meters. Come on now, uh, but I think it's a great job. Ben Smith. Stumble there with that left arm. Two minutes to go here in the cap. Her way now to the double. Comes Carlene Matthews and Matthews. Looks like it is going to be a games veteran out of CrossFit St. Helens in Helens, Oregon. Four times in the games, and then jogging across. And Matthews will have some ground to make up. And that's Finn Smith, who was in just ahead of Matthews. Victoria Finn Smith out of the United Kingdom. Not leaving the competition stage, but going to finish. 
Oh, Carly, this wouldn't be an event that I think that she would do really well in with, you know, the, the running and the rope climbs. I mean, she's being a shorter athlete. It's a lot of distance that she has to travel compared to some of the other athletes. But um, I'm excited to see her in some of the other events, and especially like when they have the more gymnastic uh, type events. I'm really excited to see her. And I'm glad she's back here anyway. You know, it's, it, like I said, it's always fun to have those X Games athletes out here on the floor. It really raises the stake for the division. And she's just a fun athlete to watch anyway. Well, and I think she's one of the fan favorites. It's great to come out and see her. As you mentioned, look, let's fake. Let's not mince words. She's dug an early hole. But it's just the first event. You got a lot of events, so we know she's got a whole lot of strength. So not a bad. Oh yeah. We'll see her start to climb that leaderboard. Oh yeah. Well, that's the feeling. We all know that feeling. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that's done. <laughs> <laughs> this may be our last runner. We'll we'll see if we can check that. But we believe Mallory Berger would be the last. Uh, she's. She's from out west, too. CrossFit Loft in Seattle, Washington. Was in the games in 2016. 33rd place finish with CrossFit Melbourne. So made her way to the States, living in Seattle. Swimmer and a bodybuilder. Kind of her background before she got into CrossFit. Try to get up there and at least get this rep before the cap runs out. Well, she's got some decent rope climbs. I must have, I mean, I don't know if it was on the run that there was an issue or what, but... Looks like she's doing okay to me. Well, she'll cap out, and that will be it as we take a look. It's China Cho, Bingston, Lapidin. That's your top three unofficially again in the women's division. And on the men, it was Morandi that ran away with it. Gamboa and Roberts make up some ground to finish second and third in the 35 to 39 year old. Taking a look at the women again. Cho, Bingston, Lapinen, Tucker, El Dubs. Again, you can go to games.crossfit.com to get the full leaderboard and the official leaders for all of our divisions. We're going to step aside. When we come back, we take a look at the adaptive athletes for the Noble CrossFit Games. Games from the North Park Arena, the Alliant Energy Center. I'm Jeff Rywood alongside Tom Yazga, our adaptive analyst here, ex Paralympian, and should be fun here. It's going to be three ways down. We'll check in a little bit later with Derek Forrest on the competition floor as we take a look at for the second season in a row, adaptive athletes and Tom. It's going to be three way downs, a lot of various ways, but still, you're out on a course, you're on some ropes, and you got some dumbbells. Absolutely. Uh, there is no better way to open up the 2022 CrossFit Games with a 30 minute, just pure grunt work event for these athletes. We're looking at a long distance run that's going to be getting shorter as we keep moving through, some rope climbs, and a descending interval of dumbbell shoulder to overhead for all of our divisions. We'll take a look at that. We'll give you a little bit more information as we go along because we have three different divisions, the upper extremity, lower extremity, neuromuscular. Each division will have just a little bit of different type of work in this. So let's take a look at, Tom, your recipes for success. Well, like you said, we have a lot of different divisions, and they're all going to approach this workout a little bit differently. So right now, let's play to your strengths. Know where you can attack. Know where you can make your move, but also be aware of where your weaknesses are. Don't be afraid to set back, get into a groove, and make sure you can feel like you're confident on those movements so that you can get into those strengths when you need to. Let's take a look at how they're going to line up, and we're going to have six different lanes. We've got male and female from the upper extremity, lower extremity, neural muscular. They'll separate them out there. Here's men's upper extremity, and Samuel Perra, one of the athletes to watch. Of course, your middle lane always, as you're familiar with, Tom, in the swimming world, your middle lane are your leaders and your favorites. Luke Reason in men's lower extremity in lane number 21 here in event 
number one. Again, that's men's lower extremity. Uh, men's neuromuscular, it will be Benjamin Fallon in lane number 37. I think these, these are the leaders coming out of the semifinals. Women's division, upper extremity. Uh, you'll take a look at Camilo Vino. There's Valley Cohen in lane 18. Women lower extremity. And to wrap things up here in the adaptive division, we'll look at uh, Lynchon New Places out of uh, the women's neuromuscular. With more on the adaptive division, let's go down to the competition floor. Let's check in with Derek Forrest. Thanks, guys. Yeah, the beauty of the adaptive competition this year, the second year that it's here at the CrossFit Games, is that there are a lot of rookies this year. 17 rookies out of the 30-person field. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of people on the floor. But one of the other things to look at, four champions of the six return this yep. year. So there are going to be only a handful of people who could potentially uh, compete for the podium. But again... 30 people on the floor, 17 are rookies, four returning champions, guys. Thank you very much, Derek. So it could be a lot of first year, so many rookies as we take a look at Casey Akrian. Going to be one of your guys to watch here, Tom. Absolutely. This may be the only second year that we have the adaptive divisions at the games, but Casey's already a name that everyone should know. Casey's coming off a six out of seven event victories in 2021 and already took home event one this morning, and he posted a 370-pound front squat in doing so. Uh, look out for him to come out hot on this run as he did win the 6K run event last year, holding a brisk 644 per mile pace. So we're out the exit of the North Park, and again, they'll make varying loops depending on their division on the courses outside. Absolutely. So our upper division are going to start with a 1,400-meter run, where our lower and neuromusculars are going to start with a 1,200-meter run. Like I said earlier in our recipe to success, we're going to have a lot of different uh, stimuli here going in this workout. So we're making sure we're matching those stimuli relative to the ability and the adaptive needs that we need for this workout. So out on the course, you see there in the background on the right side, lane number 40, that's Kevin Mayer. He is in the neuromuscular, and he'll have an aid. He'll run. We've seen it in team divisions before, a runner with him with a rope. Right, absolutely. So he actually does have a visual component to his disability as well. Uh, he actually does get around using a walking stick, a blind stick, as he traverses through his daily life. So he's got actually a guide runner with him. And you can see Kevin's out in front. It's not that the guide runner is pulling him. Kevin's taking all the lead on this one. So again, for... Several of the athletes will take a long run. There is a division, Tom, and correct me if I'm wrong, that will have a similar loop all the way around. Uh, correct. Well, actually, our neuromuscular and our lower are going to be running the same distances. Right. They're starting at the 1,200-meter loop rather than the uppers who are going the 1,400. So our neuro and our lowers are going to go a 1,200-meter run, an 800-meter run, and then a 400-meter run to finish. So a little bit shorter where our uppers are going to go that full 1,400-meter run, 1,200-meter run, and then that 800 to cap off their workout. So any adaptation that the athletes needed to make for competition? Of course, we were at the athlete briefing. They got them checked out the day before yesterday. Yeah, absolutely. So any of these... Uh, range of motion questions or clarifications or issues with any sort of prosthetics or any devices needed while out on the course today. They've all been pre-approved with the head judges, Alex Zirkenbach and Kevin Ogar. So they are uh, ready to rock and roll. There is Mayor again, as we talked about him, out of the Netherlands, made the trip overseas to Madison, Wisconsin, fifth in the semifinals in the men's neuromuscular. Yeah, but surprisingly enough, he actually came home with an event one win this morning. Already took home uh, the mixed mode madness this morning and had a really great event there. So it's exciting to see if he can keep this momentum rolling. So you see out on the course, a little spacing developing here on the first run. You get a 30-minute time cap. They'll come in with the rope climbs and the shoulder to overhead as well. Yeah. We're looking at Luke Reeson right now out of the men's lower division. They are on that separate track compared to the uppers. Uh, 12-year infantry for the British snipers. Uh, just an incredible story behind him here and had a great success this morning on that bike. Uh, really was pedaling hard on that C2 and had a really good event. He's sitting in third right now after that workout, but uh, look for him to take command here and, and not look back. So building some space here early on here in this race. Again, the first run, then four rope climbs, 21 dumbbell. Shouldered overhead as they make the turn. They'll be getting... On the back side of this first run, again, you'll exit the stadium, as you saw, come back in. You'll go into your corresponding lane. It's a first come, first serve basis on the ropes, then back to your corresponding lane for your dumbbell shoulder to overhead. And back here, we'll see the females. And out front in the females, that is uh, Bart Walsh. Check that. Coming in. 
and your back female two. And so there's your first two out front here. Yeah, absolutely. These guys are looking really strong right now. These are both coming. These ladies are both coming from our narrow division right now. So they're looking really strong. You said, saw Brett Horchar there in yep. the background as well, and it looks like he's got the lead for the narrow men right now. Not surprised there at all. Brett's coming off a uh, championship fittest on earth last year and had a great semifinals to get him out in front there this year as well. Layla Ives is your lead female there in the camo and the gray behind her. That is Lauren Taylor there in the women's neuromuscular division. So this is your top two, again, Ives and Taylor, as you see. Person make his way back in. Yeah, Reeson's already coming in. He's been a big fan of anything concept too, so we're not surprised to see him out here in front. I actually do remember we've done a workout in some qualifiers where he had a 2K row and he blitzed that thing, holding almost a 312 time. Uh, or sorry, excuse me, a uh, uh, 142 average, holding like a just an incredible pace. I, it's so fast, I can't even comprehend it. Luke Reeson out of Workington in the United Kingdom. He's in the men's lower extremity. And as you can see, our lower athletes are having to do legless rope climbs today. So they're only going to do one rope climb per round, where our upper divisions are going to be doing a few more. They're going to go three, two, one. But we're going to see one single rope climb for our narrow division and one legless rope climb for our lower athletes. Luke Reeson making easy work of that first rope climb, already moving well into these push press. He may just set a pace that no one can touch. Trying to keep the sun out of their eyes. They're modeling the Gooder Sunnies being provided for athletes and volunteers. We thank Gooder for being the official sunglasses of the Noble CrossFit Games. And again, that is Luke Reeson. He is the leader in the men's lower extremity. Your overall leader right now, Layla Ives, is in as well in the women's neuromuscular division. She was that first female in being trailed by Lauren Taylor. But Luke Reeson and this is 21 dumbbell shoulder to overhead right behind him was rogan dean and he actually came in really strong on that f second row uh, first row climb here and now he's just making quick work of these dumbbells he's not even just doing any push press it's nearly a strict press for him he is a very very strong individual that's yeah, control the dumbbell so put him down he's going to be out for round number two so tight race here in the men's lower extremity. We go back over to women's neuromuscular. There in the sunglasses and the camo doing the middle of your screen. That is Leela Eyes out of Yorkshire in the United Kingdom with CrossFit Umber, fourth in the semifinals. There we go. And we got a nice picture of Kevin going up this rope right now, doing a great job of hooking on well. And again, this guy has some visual impairments as well. So that's a lot of trust in his own abilities to be able to go up and ascend that 20 foot rope with a lot of confidence as he has. Finds the hook with those feet. And now Mayer will be on his way down lane number 40. He'll get to his shoulder to overhead. I have 21 here. Right now, the early leader in the men's neuromuscular division. Strong guy. I don't think he's going to have any trouble, as you see right there. Heads of the dumbbell out to touch the shoulder and keep yep. him controlled over between the shoulders. Looks really comfortable there. He made a good use of his transition there, not rushing things too much. He knows he needs to push these dumbbells. It's a big set, that 21, but this can really make or break that pace that you need to go into for that second run. We just saw Charles Pinera make his way out for the men's lower extremity. Now men's upper extremity, they'll do single dumbbell shoulder overhead. Absolutely, and you are going to see, like right there next to him, Jose Maldonado does have two arms. These upper individuals are required to use the same arm for every single dumbbell rep today. So you're going to see Jose using his left arm the entire way, Casey using his right arm obviously the whole way, but making quick work of that 70-pound dumbbell. I don't know if that's actually a 70-pounder. He's making it look too easy. It's Acre right there. He was on the left. Maldonado was the middle athlete, and Pera was on the right side. You're your top three, and we've got a tight race in the men's upper extremity right now. Again, it goes Acre, Maldonado, Pera unofficially right now. One, two, three, and it is very, very tight again. That's men's upper extremity. There's Maldonado going in the middle and then advancing the dumbbell right now. That is going to be Samuel Pera out of St. Petersburg, Florida. Absolutely. And again, Casey is such a strong runner right now. There's really no rush for him or urgency to try and push the pace too early on this. He knows he's got a lot of work left and all these upper individuals, even though it is a 70 pound dumbbell, can move that thing very efficiently. So he's going to know that he needs to push on that dumbbell when he gets back there for the second time through. On to round number two, and so back out on the course. Once they get back into the stadium for the adaptive athletes, 
Same as every other athlete, three rope climbs, 15 dumbbell, shoulder, two overhead. And a nice lead here for Luke Reason. Again, a 34-year-old competing in lane 25 once they get back into the North Park Arena. Again, with his eighth in the open, bumped up a little bit, fifth in the semifinal. So yeah. He's been doing a great job. It's been really cool to see Luke move up the rankings um, as we you know, started introducing adaptive CrossFit into the CrossFit scene here. Uh, COVID hindered a lot of our plans and, and him being from overseas over in England, it's been a tough challenge for him to even get here. So the fact that we get to see Luke live and taking names already is pretty exciting for all of us. Be interested to see how the adaptive division develops over the years in a CrossFit, you being a, a Paralympian. And we had discussed this the other day. It's in its infancy, second year here at CrossFit Paralympics lot of divisions. We'll see how this kind of develops throughout the years. Absolutely. I cannot be more ecstatic to be here on the mic, but even just to watch these athletes, it's been incredible. I've been involved in CrossFit for five, six years now, and from where we've started to not even having a division on the open leaderboard to now having a semifinal and seeing athletes regularly participating in the games, uh, this is only the beginning of a lot of great opportunities for us in the future, and I cannot wait to be a part of it. And you had told me a lot of adaptive athletes prior to having that, that, that category the open leaderboard would sign up, take your standing, and then you would just go hunt, see where you, you, you stacked up among your friends. But now it's so nice to be able to go in there, filter things out. Absolutely, yeah. It's one of those things where you're going to love the CrossFit community no matter where you go. I think one of the greatest things I found joining CrossFit in the first place was that it is truly fitness for all. It is functional fitness that is, can be adapted and modified or scaled to whatever sort of adaptations you may need. And it's so impressive to see these athletes making such great progress and helping us put such a good forefront for adaptive CrossFit in the future. Same standards uh, as any other division. They told us yesterday in the athlete briefing, make sure you don't leave it up to judge. You get a good good smack on that crossbar, and Reason did. Full hand there, and now he's going to be on his way to his round of 15. Dumbbell shoulder overhead. The standard here, one head's going to touch that shoulder. Keep it controlled at top, inside the shoulders. Absolutely, yep. Making sure we're getting that full lockout just behind the ears. And Luke is making really, really exciting work here. I'm excited to see where he goes with this. He's been putting on a really good performance in these first two events today. And uh, he may be a name that we want to watch on that last and final day. There's Kevin Mayer again. He was your early leader, still is, the men's neuromuscular. Looking really strong. His run's feeling pretty good. He's got Valerie Cohen coming up right behind him. Valerie's coming off of a really nice performance in event one, taking that win, had a really, really strong performance on that bike. So we're not surprised to see her getting out really strong on this run as well. That's Cohen on the left in the black tank top and the camo pants. Cohen out of Chicago, Illinois, goes to Feast CrossFit. First in the open, first in the semifinals. So there's your favorite in the women's lower extremity. Absolutely. And as we're looking, we uh, see Luke already heading back out for that third run, making some really, really impressive work at this event. Uh, excited to see, especially the fact that we get to have all of our athletes competing at the same time. You know, I think this is great for not only Luke, but also individuals like Casey and Brett, who are former champions as well, to be able to have that extra push from athletes outside of their own divisions to help keep them moving as fast as they want to on this one. Maurice and the only one back out of the course for the third. And he's going to lap a few of the athletes there and some good sportsmanship there. Nice pat on the back. Always like to feel that when you're out at the box and someone's coming up behind you. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing. Elliot Young there in our lower men's division, running for these lower athletes is something that is quite a challenge, right? When we talked about our recipes for, strength, uh, for success, know your strengths, right? Running may not be one of those things for many of our lower individuals. They didn't have to run last year at the 2021 games. This is something new for them, and especially heading out on different terrains between gravel and grass and pavement. That's asking a lot of these guys, and so they're just doing their best right now with what they've got, knowing that there's a long weekend ahead to make up some ground. Far right corner, the right corner was Lauren Taylor. She's second in the women's duo muscular. And again, on your screen right there is Mayer in the camo top, the black shorts. And again, uh, some, some side in pyramid, as you talked about, we'll use that rope just as a guy, not pulling, not aiding at all. Correct, exactly. Yep, Kevin is doing all the work right now. He's uh, His guide has been well-trained and well-reinforced uh, through different movement standards and different accommodations with his head judges to make sure that he's not doing anything for Kevin. Casey Ankery, and that's an athlete, that, uh, one of the guaranteed rate athletes uh, to watch that you talked about 
early this week, uh, if you were going to pick out one athlete, really among all divisions, that's the one that you really spied early. Oh, absolutely. Casey is, uh, let's just put it a different way. He's just a different specimen of human. This guy is unbelievable. His work ethic and his abilities, he has never let that um, missing limb ever slow him down. The guy has a registered 335 pound clean with an arm and a half. So <laughs> I, I don't know, you know, what, what do you make of that, right? It's just unbelievable. So Mayer is back in. Acres, your defending champion. Now let's watch the exchange here because Mayer is going to have to make his way back up the rope from the crash pad. And we'll see how our adaptive athletes use their aids and how they navigate such an outstanding job they have done and, and from what CrossFit has done to, to help these guys. And yeah, I think what's really cool about this whole entire event is, again, even though we have a lot of different adaptions happening to this workout and the rep scheme and how we are approaching this, everyone's achieving the same stimulus through this workout. As you would go into any L1 class, or if you go into any gym, you're going to make sure that you're trying to make sure everyone feels the same way and that they get the same burn out of the same workouts that we're doing. Couple of deep two. breaths there before we start the rope climb, because again, as we were in the athlete belts. breathing, we, we all know high penalty if you fail a rope climb as far as coming down and having to wait a long time to, to know if you, and it doesn't matter if you're going up legless or not. You gotta take a little time for you to go up if right. you fail a rep. You absolutely want to be smart here. These can be expensive reps, as we like to call it. If they go up there and they're already 18 feet up the rope and they miss a rep, you've wasted a lot of time, but more importantly, a lot of energy that we definitely need as we go into these dumbbells and shoulder overhead again. Mayor walks his way down for the dumbbells. Round of 15 coming up. We have one athlete, and it looks like that may be eight. No, not a creep, but way up top. And that is going to be Mendez, I believe. We'll double check that. That's Luke Reason, excuse me. And he is running away with this thing. He's looking pretty good. We did just get a no rep here, and Rogan Dean is not far behind him. You got Rogan Dean wearing his, actually, his prosthetic blade. Going to be a big aid in running, but that is no match for Reason. He's going to come across. Get that event win. This is big for Luke. This was a really nice event for him. 100 points for Luke Reason in the men's lower extremity. So he is your unofficial winner, and Rogan Dean's going to grab himself. And again, the scoring system with five athletes, 100 points for a win, 75 for second. Then it goes in increments of 20, 55, 35, and 15. So the five athlete scoring system. So you get a little, little bit of kick for that first place. Absolutely, yeah. We're seeing this back from our 2020 games, uh, the scoring center, when we only had the top five individual athletes competing uh, out in uh, Madison. So this is exciting to see. How this is going to shape out. Every event's going to mean a lot more this week. Great race here. Left side of your screen is Layla Ives. Right side of your screen is Lauren Taylor. This is the women's neuromuscular. Three reps left on the left side for Layla Ives. And on the right side again, Lauren Taylor trying to make up some room. Absolutely. And these athletes are looking really strong right now. Both of them are rookies to the field this year. So we're excited to see them get out in front and make a presence known very soon. Or very early, excuse me. Chance for Taylor to make a move. And she does. She'll looking get strong. past Ives. Ives has three reps remaining here in the round of 15. So she'll take a lead just over midway through event number one. Jeremy Pereira. And she'll make her way back out of the stadium. And this is the adaptive division, upper extremity, lower extremity, also the neuromuscular. Looks like we just had two neuromuscular athletes just finish uh, their workout, actually. Mayor and Pereira? I believe so, yeah. Really good finish for both of those guys. There goes Ives back out of the stadium. Right now, second place in the women's neuromuscular. Absolutely. Morgan Johnson giving a little love to the camera there. She's having a lot, a great time out there. Uh, I don't know how she's doing it because that is a grueling workout. So you got 13 minutes remaining in the 30 minute time cap here. Boy, don't be full these guys in these women throwing around once they get, we've seen them on the dumbbells, they're throwing around the regular weights out there. Absolutely. They're, 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 <laughs> yeah, there is, there is no joke behind that. It looks like we got Morgan Johnson, I believe, already finishing that. Morgan Johnson finishing that workout already. Great event for her right there. Looks like she got the event victory in that one for the neural women there. Well, that's 100 points. The race looked early on like it was going to be Ives and Taylor, but Morgan Johnson, you see that in the games. It doesn't matter what division. You get a good race, and 
Boy, if you're on that outside lane, you can just sneak up on some people. And Morgan Johnson out of Houston, Texas, 100 points and an event win in the women's neuromuscular. Yeah. And here's a great guy to watch in our upper men's division. We got Alexi Fiorucci coming out of France. He actually had three event win, uh, excuse me, three second place finishes in the semifinals. Looked really strong and looked like a good fight for Jose to fight for second. Let's be honest, Casey Acre is looking pretty strong so far this year. So Alexi and Jose will have a really good fight for that second place this year. Maybe we'll see. You never know. They could fight for that top spot too. Smart play there. We've seen some athletes carry it to the side, some in the front rack with a grip. Just put it on the shoulder. Try to try to save as much as you can for that last Absolutely. round. Absolutely. With the, with these guys only using one arm the entire time, their grip's going to get a lot more tax than most of our other competitors this week. So really making sure they're isolating that grip when they need to use it, being smart with their movement patterns in between transitions. Fiorucci will make his way back out for his final round when he comes back in. He'll be on the ropes, then a set of nine on the dumbbells, shoulder to overhead then make his way to the finish line. So you've got a little bit over 11 minutes remaining here. 30 minute time cap again here. This will be the third run, then you'll get on the round of the nine yeah, absolutely. with the dumbbells. And he's in a good spot right now. Looks like he's got a lot of uh, swimmer pun here, clear water in front of him and behind him. So he's can, he can be smart on this run, knowing that he's got to come back in and make hay on that last rope climb and those nine shoulder to overhead. There's our leader, Valerie Cohen, looking really strong, really doing a nice job with that press push press that especially watching her use her brace to her advantage on that right side and that lower limb making sure she's getting that nice step out really helping her drive through here making quick work of those nines she's going to come across and get that event victory for the women's lower extremity so 100 points for valerie cohen again out of feast crossfit in chicago illinois one lower extremity a year ago now she's a former collegiate gymnast and an unfortunate injury, tore her Achilles and had a post-op infection. And since then, that's what has limited her function on the ankle. Absolutely, yeah. And her gymnastic skills are going to come well into play across this week, I bet. And uh, just to see her do so well on these long, grueling events already is, uh, is a good sign for her. Looks like we just saw Alyssa Cabela come across the line as well. She was the winner of the Women's Neuromuscular Division semifinals this year. So uh, Morgan Johnson got the win, but more, uh, Alyssa not far behind her. Comes Mayer back in. This will be his final round. Final time with the ropes. Final nine. Dumbbell shoulder to overhead. This is fun to see. Uh, we haven't uh, seen a picture of Brett Horcher in, on, uh, in a minute, but I have a feeling that he's right there with, with Kevin. And Kevin, again, looking really strong, ready to make a name for himself this week at the games. Uh, Brett, your defending champion from a season ago, and he won the Open, won the semis. Acre back on the left side, yeah, lane number eight, trying to wrap up 100 points. And just a great, great example of how important that hook grip can be on that rope. Casey making quick work, even with having one functional hand to help him hoist, hoist up that rope. He's doing a great job of getting that nice knee tuck, getting some huge extension as he reaches forward, and really just doing a nice job of having to pull that rope in a little bit closer to his body than most of us would. Obviously, that has some great stability, being able to press and clamp against your chest as well. And then again, that that 70 pound dumbbell is just like a feather for this guy. Just making quick work of these last nine. I don't think he's going to put it down. We're going to get a nice solid victory out of Casey here to start the day. Oh, you always want to go unbroken on that set of nine. No, yeah, you got to finish hard, right? You always got to give it your all. He's going to get his points. He'll make his way across. Aikri trying to get a season sweep after finishing first in the open in the semis and trying to take the top spot on the podium for a second season in a row. Two for two already. He's off to a great start. Looking really confident. And what I love most about Casey is he is so smart with his pacing. He is such a game plan going into any workout that you see him do. He doesn't He doesn't falter. He doesn't rush himself. He just stays composed and it always pays off. Kevin Mayer is in. No wrap it up in the men's neuromuscular. So he'll take 100 points. There's Fallon over there as well. Actually, he'll take second place. And so he'll grab 75 points again in the five Five athlete scoring system, you get a little bit of a bonus, 25. You get those extra five points for that event win. Absolutely. This is looking really good so far. Uh, seen some really competitive com uh, races coming into these finish lines. Right there, that's going to be Layla I, and she'll make her way across. We have taken a look at her several times this morning out of CrossFit Humber in East Yorkshire in the United Kingdom. Seventh of the Open, she was fourth in the semifinals, back to the lower extremity division 
And here comes Amy Bream. Amy Bream has been quite the story. We saw her first come on the scene in the 2021 games and just overwhelmed the crowd with how awesome and inspirational she was, uh, just fighting through these movements. And Amy has a unique situation where she is the only above knee amputee in the women's lower division. So you can see in her gait, she's going to have to run with that blade, which is a great aid for her. But again, it's going to change her gait significantly compared to her competitors. Bream a year ago was fifth. She'll try to move up in the rankings this season. In fields of five in the adapted division, she's unaffiliated out of the United States, a 30-year-old, third in the opening and second in the semis. It's been interesting. I was over at the Coliseum this morning watching their first event and even watching our lower women in our mus neuromuscular divisions on that C2 bike. I'm thinking to myself, well, how's that going to impact their run even on this the next event, especially with the heat being so hot on that turf out there? That could definitely change the pace and the strategy for these athletes. And we see Amy, Amy still making great work, keeping strong. It's, it's definitely nothing that uh, we can scoff at. This is no joke of a workout. Bring back out on her final lap, and we will go back to the, I believe, the upper extremity, and it's the single arm dumbbell shoulder to overhead. Looks like that's Sam Para finishing up his work out there. Trains with training think tank on the regular. Clearly, that's paying off. A great finish for him right there. Well, they've got a lot of athletes at training think tank, and so Para is across. Fourth in the open, fourth in the semis. He first year competing in this division. Been doing CrossFit since 2013. And here is Osa Mendez at Anboto uh, CrossFit in Spain, fourth in the semis. Shabby's got a great story. This guy is a lot of fun. This dumbbell is definitely rigorous for these guys. If you can notice, he is missing a few of his fingers on that functional hand there that he has. So this is even more of a challenge with that grip. So if you think about trying to grab a 70-pound dumbbell shoulder to overhead with basically an open palm, that's what you got. And Shabby's making a quick work of that thing still. It's actually pretty cool. He actually took uh, CrossFit to the Spain's Got Talent stage wow. and actually put on a great demonstration of what adaptive CrossFit could be for the whole country of Spain. It was just so cool. I remember actually uh, just thumbing through Facebook and seeing that video pop up <laughs> and just thinking, like, I'm not surprised at all by this guy. But this is uh, this man is something really to be admired, uh, admired in the adaptive world. He's really out there making sure that everybody is uh, knows that there's a fitness for all. Oh, so his back, yeah, you talked about that, that grip. What, a, what an incredible feat to be able to use balance, which is one of our tenets of fitness and, and, and CrossFit, to keep that dumbbell steady. Absolutely. And I think that's a lot of what we see with our adaptive athletes is that there is a lot of movement pattern that they make look so easy, but we don't realize necessarily all the internal fights and, and just cues they're having to give themselves in order to stay upright or maintain good balance and posture as they're moving through. Legend play will come across out of South Africa CrossFit PBM, a 24-year-old, second in the neuromuscular a season ago. She tags herself on a questionnaire. She says she is a semi-bionic human. She's pretty right about that. Actually, a really cool story. So last year, we were at the 2021 Games. Again, we didn't have to run for the women's neuro or lower divisions, but she did have a difficulty running where somebody actually reached out to her after watching the broadcast and said, hey, Lechen, I can make you a brace that would allow you to run. And wow. she got that brace fitted for her in March, and now she's out here running this course, and it's just probably one of the coolest things I could ever mention. So we're moving around in the women's upper division. And that is Anne-Laure Kutenkow out of CrossFit Honey Baby in France. Trying to do the sweep, too. Won the Open, won the semifinals. Yeah, she's definitely a very, very strong athlete. Athlete. She really favors those CrossFit-style workouts. So this might be a little bit out of her realm, but she is making great work, and she's going to keep herself in this race throughout this whole weekend. Young is in. Elliot Young in lane 22 in the men's lower extremity as he will finish on the inside the 30-minute time cap. Yeah, we saw him struggling a little bit on that run, but we clearly he must have made up some great ground on that rope climb and finishing strong with those dumbbells. Good cow back in, 35-year-old, 30 year ago in the women's upper extremity. Yep, looking really strong here. We're going to see a lot of the same approach to that rope climb as we saw with Casey Acri earlier. Coming in with a very similar uh, limb length here. So she's going to hug that rope really close to her chest, really brace hard with her residual limb there. And again, it's all about getting that nice high knee drive. When we think about doing knees to elbows in class and our L1s, right, this is the first place where this is going to really make a big difference for her. We need to make sure we're driving those knees hard and getting maximum efficiency out of every single pull because 
Doing a rope climb with one arm can only be so fun. Absolutely, and it's the same. It's the same thing we talk about in the open divisions or the masters or the teens having a little trouble. Oh. Got to show control on the way down. There's no more red mark. You got to control. You can get down any way you want to. You just have to control yourself. But you want to use as much leg in a rope climb. Regardless, in, in, in any division, yeah. and your grip, as you mentioned, is already getting fatigued. Oh, 100%. I can tell you, coming from the seated adaptive <laughs> athlete side of this, rope climbs that are legless up and down are a whole new beast, <laughs> so don't worry. <laughs> As uh, about two minutes here, grab these shoulder to overhead. And again, even even with the single arm, got to show control inside that shoulder at the top. Absolutely, yep. And the women here are using that 50-pound dumbbell for our upper extremity. So, again, this is a traditional RX weight that we're seeing for most of our individual and uh, a team and elite athletes this weekend. So, again, don't scoff off what these adaptive athletes can do. There is no quitting any of them. She'll come in with 90 seconds to spare inside the time cap. And good cow is in. <laughs> Just under 90 seconds remaining here in the 30-minute time gap. You talked about look, she's throwing around that 50-pound dumbbell. Just, just in your box for your average crossfitter like me, it's, it's your men's RX. It's Absolutely, your local box. right? Yeah. Again, you can't take anything for granted. These athletes out here are training CrossFit as if this is their professional lifestyle. Um, many of them commit to a CrossFit lifestyle throughout their day on top of daily jobs as well. So uh, just to see them out here and succeed the way they are is pretty impressive. Navy Bream's going to come in. She'll complete it inside the 30-minute time cap. Awesome. Great finish for Amy there. Again, this is not a workout that favors her right now. Um, but again, she had a great, great finish there. And as you can see, her prosthetic blade actually fell off when she was coming down on that rope climb. So again, great for her to be able to keep, keep her composure, put that leg back on, and just take care of those last set of dumbbells. Well, this is event number one of the competition for the week. And these athletes, a lot of the rookies, as we talked about, getting their first taste of the North Park. They've been in the Coliseum already today, and they've got a week full of competition. It's going to be fun. It's going to be 15 seconds remaining in this time cap. Not sure how many athletes right now we still have. If you're out on the course, just like the other divisions, you've got to finish it if anyone's still out on the course, so they'll have a corral finish. Absolutely, yeah. If you're out there still running, we got to make sure you finish in because they're going to note who came back from the run first to help that order finish for tiebreaker purposes. There is Kevin Mayer. He put on a nice show in the men's studio. Muscular out there on the run. Did great. Great. He was outstanding on the dumbbells. No issue with that. Absolutely. All of these athletes had a great performance here. Really excited to see most of them getting underneath that time cap, setting up a great, great success for the rest of the week. Now, for these athletes, they've got two events down. And if you want to check the standings, go to games.crossfit.com. That's going to give you all the official standings in any division. Whether you're watching teams, open division, masters, teens, adaptive athletes, you can keep up with the standings, whether it's the overall or the event wins on games.crossfit.com. And we're going to talk to a few of them here shortly uh, out on the floor as they wrap it up at three divisions going all at one time. There is Osa as we saw him out there in that 30-minute time capped event. Yeah, absolutely. And again, these upper uh, upper extremity guys that we're just seeing, Casey Acri and Shabi Osa, they're going to have a great week. Uh, names that we've known and recognized for a long time in the adaptive scene, so we're looking forward to seeing all the fun that's yet to come. All right, let's go down to the competition floor. Here's Derek Forrest. <laughs> Thanks, thanks, guys. Here with the winners, we've got the winner for lower extremity. Uh, just, <laughs> I know, I'm all over the place. Um, just talk about coming back for a second year in a row. You won. You were on the podium last year. You start the weekend on the, po well, not on the podium, but winning the event. How does it feel winning the event today? Um, it feels good. Uh, I think definitely this year means a lot more because um, I've been training for so long for it and. Um, so it just, it means a lot. Awesome. On the neuromuscular side, Morgan Johnson, you win your first ever <laughs> event. You're a rookie at the games this year. Yes. To be here, how does it feel? It's amazing. Honestly, this is all to give awareness to Tourette's. Um, that's, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the fact that I have Tourette's and that I'm able to do everything I can with my disability. I am over the moon, to be honest. <laughs> awesome. Congratulations. You guys crushed it. Thanks a lot. Guys, back to you. Thanks a lot, Derek. And that'll wrap it up for the Adaptive Division. We're headed back to the Masters from the Noble CrossFit Games.
2022 Noble CrossFit Games from the Align Energy Center. We're at the North Park Arena. I'm Jeff Brightwell alongside Bill Grunner back into the Masters. We're going 60 to 64 and then a 65 plus division. We'll talk later on with Garrett Forrest on the competition floor. Age is no limitation. They added that 65 plus division a couple seasons ago, Bill, because they're like, look, we still got it. We want to show what we have as well. Oh, they still got it. And this is what's amazing about this end of this is the longevity. Because look at they're going to do the exact same stuff. We have that decreasing three rounds of the run, the rope climbs, and the dumbbell shouldered overhead with the men using the 50 pound dumbbell and the ladies using the 35. Um, and we're going to see the same basic things as we saw with the teenagers, as we saw with the middle ages, and as we see here at the 60 plus athletes, where you have to get down to. The important thing is that you got to crush. This is a race, and you got to race. Recipe for success, the same for all divisions, you said. You know, and it is. It's Yes, you got to play to your strengths, even though that's for the adaptive one, but we're going to talk about running that race. You want to race that run. So if you are a good runner, use it to your advantage and get out there and hold it out there and try to get some of those rabbit chase a couple of people out there if you can, and then know your rope. So we're doing rope climbs for these athletes, and you have to be able to do that, get those rope climbs, and nail them. Let's take a look at how they're going to line up here. We've got 40 athletes, two age groups, four Four divisions overall with the men and the women starting with 60 to 64 year old men and again the middle lanes will be important but William Powell and Tom Family that's going to be an incredible race 65 plus for the men John Mariotti sitting in lane six there's Charrington in lane number 35 women 60 to 64 Shelly Chapel's a name and so is Mary Beth Pomodritis and then 65 plus for the women Pia Gunn Julie Holt this is going to be really really good and then our oldest competitor Yoki Dukoff we, we've seen a lot of stuff on social media on her rope climbs very recently so she's gonna be a fun one to watch you know it, how many how many of your grandparents are doing rope climbs you know and, and I, I say that kind of tongue-in-cheek but that's how amazing these athletes are these are you know your older your grandparent type athletes and these are not your normal grandparents they are doing rope climbs not only are they racing the run but they're having to climb up and down that 20-foot rope um, and they're working those dumbbells so it's always super impressive to see just what you can do and not only what you can do but how long you can do something like that um, you know the athletes that we have here we have have re returning games athletes, uh, people that have been here not just a couple times, but people that have gone through the open from sometimes 12 to, you know, 8 to 12 years of time. So there's a lot of elite level CrossFitters with a elite level experience time um, on the books as we get these guys around the, uh, the course. Uh, this is going to be the first run. You see Bridges out up uh, on the top in that lead pack here, and we'll see what kind of separation we are going to get early on. It's always interesting, you know, when you talk about a, a, an older athlete, some of the, the sports that you'll see older athletes do is running and swimming and biking because it's, well, you know, it's low impact. But when you get the athletes that have been doing some of your other activities, like William Powell right there in the black shirt and the, we'll say that shiny head, <laughs> uh, that hairdo. Uh, Will Powell is a beast. This guy, you know, four-time champion. He has been around for so long, and not only has been around a long time, but has been dominant for so long. One year, he actually had, uh, they found a tumor um, in his heart, and he finished the CrossFit Games, had the tumor, had to deal with that, and has been working his way back, and would be able to come back as a champion. Uh, one last year, found out again he had some, uh, a tumor that he had to deal with, and it has, again, been building himself back up. So even though the quarterfinals and the semifinals and the qualifying rounds weren't the best that he would normally have, you can never count that guy out. And that is your guaranteed rate athlete to watch in this. Well, you talk about fitness. Uh uh, you talked about that situation with the tumor when you tell the doctor, well, let me wrap up these games and then we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, let me go and beat a bunch of people first and then we can talk about dealing with like sicknesses or whatever. Uh, but just, I mean, just look at look at these athletes. So here's like your men across the board. Now we do have Pia Gunn, I believe, right there that's coming right in the middle of your screen with the white blades on her face. I think I was... Uh, you know, the nice, the nice fact that we're having a lot of the women kind of mixed into the uh, into the mix here. Patty McGill right there in the white top. See Powell again right in the middle of your screen. Guaranteed rate athlete to watch here in this heat here in the event. And again, 10-point scoring system for the Masters with 10 athletes this year. 
So it'll just go 100, 90, 80, 70 on down here in the Masters division. You know, we talked about you got to run that race. We see these athletes out here to the front pushing the tempo, trying to catch some other of the uh, some other athletes and pull them along as much as they can. Now, right there is Patty McGill. Uh, I really like what she has coming into this event. We talked about how important are the rope climbs. She was the 16th and a first, and the first was in the rope climb shuttle run that they had to do. Um, and she was second in the run last year. So if you, these athletes had to run a three and a half mile run. Uh, she did that in 23.30. So you know that this is where she's gonna make her, this is where she's gonna make her push. And again, if there's any ladies that really wanna try to hang with her, they're gonna have to get going on that run. Third a year ago in 60 to 64. So out in that lead pack for Patty McGill in the 60 to 64 year old women's division. We have the 60 to 64 year olds, the 65 plus division. That's the oldest grouping here in walkover coming up uh, a little bit of a limp on that back stretch. And so hopefully she is able to walk it up. Let's get Karen. I uh, you know, walk over there, athlete six, five, nine. And we talked about, you know, that the terrain, even though it looks way better than I was expecting it to look like mm -hmm. after how, all that rain, I mean, that doesn't say you can't twist an ankle or maybe pull a, ham, a hamstring or whatever on the, on the run. It's always possible. It's one of the things about getting older is that you'll have those funky little things that would just kind of spring up, even though there may have not been any sort of a... Uh, identifier before that you know so uh we'll have to see how patty's doing and she's doing her thing um they have all the medical people around in case they need it so you know walk it off and get going looks like she started to trot again started to walk it off pick it up out of crossfit wiley and wiley texas walk over ninth in the semi finals this year you got sherrington out in front and Charrington is one of those guys that I really had my eye on for this event. So with the two rope climb events that we had in this, the one in the semi and the one in the quarter, he won both of those in this age division. So that's a plus in his favor. Other than that, he was second in the run last year when they had the long run. He was 21-24 for his time. So when you put those two together, this was almost made for him. So this would be a great event for Cal to get in there and kind of start off that, uh, start off his competition and uh, hopefully get a nice 100-point win. And, and Cal's a guy that I know you, you talk to and he relates to you and and we saw it early in crossfit when you would see probably strength and conditioning coaches and coaches of other sports outside crossfit they would look at it and you'd get the usual uh, what, what what's that stuff going on what are you guys doing he coached wrestling but he found that the methodology in crossfit was extremely effective <laughs> for the wrestlers and that's how he got hooked and now he's the owner of stand firm CrossFit. i know it's so amazing i love the fact that a wrestling coach sees the benefit of crossfit i mean i, I talk to athletes and coaches all the time and they have a very hard time if they've not done crossfit to understand just how potent it is and I mean I wrestled all all my life five years old to 27 years old I wish I had CrossFit back in the day and I was in great shape but I wish I had CrossFit so right on Cal. Charrington getting a little bit more distance there in the 65 plus men's division we will see the athletes make their way back in here in just a moment and there's Charrington and that first grouping coming back in. Of course when they get to their corresponding name placard they can go into that quad of the ropes and it's a first come first serve then they'll have to go back to the corresponding lane with the dumbbells this will be the round of four rope climbs 21 dumbbells shouldered overhead once again, this is our wow, right to the rope. Look at that. I love the way he's leaning back, trying to get those legs up as high as he can. I think his arms are a little more bent than I'd like them to be. Just, again, you don't want to have your arms bent at all. Even though you're not pulling, that's still time under tension. So the longer he can keep his arms, the better. But he's got a great lean back and really getting those feet up nice and tall, nice and high. Kyle Charrington leading it for the 65-plus male division. This is round number one of a three round test on day number one for the age groups in the adaptive division second day overall and took a little swipe at the crossbar and look it's a sunny day out there and the judges told you make it definitive smack it make sure your judge doesn't have to make that judgment call he is still just holding a great, great pace with that rope. And you see how he's holding that rope away? Just because it's not touching the mat. So when he came down that one time, it actually wrapped around his arm. It got a little uh, rope burn around that arm. 
So you Charrington check with the judge, go to the corresponding lane. Charrington is in lane 35. So he'll begin set of 21, shoulder to overhead, double dumbbell, and have to have a head touch the shoulder. Show control inside the sh shoulder girdle in there once you get over there and we take a look at McGill again back on the ropes. Well, you saw a little hand slip. Now this is where, you know, you have those wristbands to kind of keep the sweat off your hands, but don't be afraid to over chalk. I mean, we maybe we'll give people a hard time for chalking up too much when we're in the gym, but when you're out here in the competition for it, oh man, chalk up because you want that hand, those hands to be dry so that you can uh, not, so you don't slip. I mean, I don't see any chalk on those no. hands. Come on, Patty, don't be afraid. Grab that chalk. And it's not so much the grip, having trouble finding that hook and making sure she gets the touch on the crossbar. There she goes. There we go. <laughs> chalk them up. That's it. Did you say you had some chalk down here? <laughs> now, one of the things that's a plus, again, as long as she's not pulling with her arm, that's really going to help, too. So long, you can see her arms are bent, too. If she can get those arms straight and hang, then at least her, she's not going to have to do a whole lot of work with her hands. She can just kind of hang on to the rope while she's adjusting her feet. So Miguel and Miguel are getting pushed a little bit from behind, and they're trying to keep the sun out of their eyes. Speaking of that, you want to model the Gooder Sunnies. They're being provided for athletes and volunteers, and we thank Gooder for being the official sunglasses of the Noble CrossFit Games. And she may have got a no rep, came down. You got to show control, and here comes Aiken back out. That's, that's one thing we talked about on the ropes this year. It's been varying different years. So it's a little bit longer rope, and this year there's not the red tape. The hand over hand line on the way down, but you do have to show control on the way down. You know, and I'm okay with that. I, I think it's, you know, let the athlete do what they need to do as far as getting up and down. Um, an athlete should be able to compete and do their performance. Uh, I like the idea of safety, but they got that nice big mat down there as well. So, so a pretty healthy lead right back out of the stadium. We begin our middle round round two of three so it'll be a little bit shorter run still a pretty good uh hike at 1400 meters i believe that's aiken who came back out on the run for round number two shannon aiken and you know i think shannon was one of the guys that was up towards that front uh pack that was really kind of pushing the tempo and this is where you find out if you went too hard or not. Uh, we saw that there has been a, a, you know, Cal was up in the front. And maybe he just went a little bit too, pushed that, pushed that tempo a little bit too much. Um, Famray right there also kind of getting into the mix. Um, he's, he's one of those guys that's looking to beat Will Powell. Uh, same thing with Shannon Aiken. So you have these two guys that are trying to get those points because they know that once they get into some of those heavy-duty CrossFit-style events, that's where Will Powell really, you know, really exceeds and excels. So these guys are really trying to put themselves, one, not only get those top two spots, but two, really put a lot of distance between them and the rest of the field, which look at that distance they put between them and the rest of the field. And here's the thing. So Aiken leading in the camo shirt on the left side, tank top on the right side, Tom Famery out of Green Bay, Wisconsin. Once they get back into the alliance, they're also in lanes that are next to each other. Family in lane 15, Aiken in 16. So they get back in and keep it close. That's going to be a great race side by side. I imagine Tom's going to have a pretty good uh, support group here being from Green Bay in state. And, you know, both those two guys have been battling back and forth in the semis and the quarters as well, too. So both were first and second in both of those. Well, that's Patty McGilligan trying to navigate those ropes. And has finally finished that last rope climb, and now she's ready to make her way toward the dumbbells. That's the first thing, thing in a test like this. You know, if you run slow, you run slow, you can make it up. Dumbbells, put them down, shake it out. But there's a high cost failing a rope climb. You've got to just take your time before you go back up sometimes. Yeah, any, any of the gymnastics style movements, if you go past that red line and go too deep into uh, the fatigue, not only do you miss that rep and take the time to do that, but you now have the energy expenditure that you have to deal with that, and now you have the recovery to deal with that. Because the last thing you want to have to do is miss another rep. So uh, wait for her to go, and then you know make, get, get busy on those dumbbells. Oh, I did like the fact that she had a very deliberate pace on the dumbbells. I wanted to make sure every rep was going to count on that. 
Kelly Chapel and the 60 to 64 year old women coming out there in the camouflage, making her way back out onto the running course. So we have a big lead here uh, with Shannon Aiken out in the front and then uh, with Tom Famery right behind him. Now, there's a big distance between those two guys, and they really were pushing the front. They pushed that tempo. We saw what happened with Cal uh, Charrington sitting up in the front. He got dusted because he pushed too hard. In fact, he just left the stadium now. But I really love the way that Shannon is pushing the, the tempo on this run. He looks so good. You know, and he's one of the guys that won, actually he won both of those, both rope climb events. So this is a great position for him to be in. Not only is he doing well in the run, but to have the rope experience um, out of the qualifiers is great for him. Just to give you an update here, and again, we've got two divisions, male and female, going 60 to 64, then 65 plus. You take a look at Shannon Aiken again, sitting your screen with a nice lead. And the women's 60 to 64 right now, this is unofficial. You've got Downing, Jardin, and Corwin are your top three in that division. We'll try to keep them straight for you here. We've got a lot going on here in the, the Masters. It's going to be a fun week, 60 to 64 year old. Uh, males right now, unofficially, it's Aiken, Family, Will Powell, your top three, Gonzalez, and Gailey in fifth place. And again, we'll update you throughout this 30-minute event as we can on how the races are going. You got basically four different races going on in this test. Yeah, and I think that what Aiken is doing is great. You really want to push to jump out to the front in the beginning. You know, and as we saw earlier, like with China Cho, if you have the lead, then you can sort of back down a little bit. These athletes have to remember that they have a long week of competition. And, you know, if you're an older athlete, they always talk about recovery. So do what you can to get out into the front, make whatever push you need to so that you aren't having to play catch up. And then you can ride it out for the rest of the time. It just, just enough to do what you need to do to get those uh, top first place, second place finishes. Yeah, Debbie Downing leading that 60 to 64 year old out of Auckland, New Zealand. Functional strength CrossFit was second in the semis. Five time games athlete. Best was seventh place back in 2019. Now on the back side of that course. Now the, I guess the, the middle lap on the run, two bills, now is when you know, the, the voices start talking in your, in your head. Where do I, do I need to ramp it up on the run? Do I need to stay in the same pace? <laughs> because things get so spread out and you're seeing athletes that aren't in your division. Right. You're like, where, where exactly do I need to be here? I think there's a lot of uh, self-assessment going on right now. <laughs> Did I do enough or am I not doing enough? Um, you'll learn very quickly if you went over too far. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, with the way that Debbie's moving, uh, she's not moving super graceful, so she may have pushed a little bit out in the front. But I think that really where she was making her distance was on the rope climbs and the dumbbells. And here is Shannon Aiken, again, your leader, 60 to 64-year-old males. Shannon Aiken, a collegiate swimmer at Missouri State, also a triathlete and a biker. So he's fairly well-rounded there. Of course, if you make it here, you're incredibly well-rounded out of Springfield, <laughs> Missouri. And, of course, let's face it, when these masters were, were teens and competing, they had no idea in the future there's going to be this thing called CrossFit. They just like to play. And we encourage our younger athletes, our, our teens that come to the box, they just, don't give up your sports. Yeah. Play your sports. Play as many different ones as you can. Right, right. That, I mean, that that is being a well-rounded athlete. And I just think that, I mean, one, it's just so fun. I think that's one of the really enjoyable things about being an older athlete is, you know, we did this stuff having fun. And it's really fun to get back in there and have some fun with everybody again. Let's make a statement here. When when he was taking PE P class back in his day, <laughs> the, the ropes were still hanging in the gyms in high yeah, schools. Yeah, they were. <laughs> yeah, they were. And I love the fact that that's what CrossFit has done is bring brought all of that stuff back. Um, you know, for these guys, for these athletes, it's like, oh, I remember you. Oh, hi, I remember you. <laughs> First year they introduced the pegboard. They're probably yeah, yes. I, I, we remember that. Oh yeah. So Aiken, Family, Powell, Gonzalez, Gailey, your leaders here in the 60 to 64 year old division. There's Tom making his way down that rope. Look, that's smart. Look at that. In the shade. Gets himself in the shade just to kind of hang out just a bit and make his way back up. Again, he doesn't have to push over push this. 
He's got some distance between him and Shannon up in that front, but he's also has some distance on Will behind him. So this is a great position for him to be in. Just hang out, get through this round so that you can, if you need to push, you can push on that final round. But he's in a great position, great job on, on recovery and managing his recovery through these rounds. Nothing wrong with taking 90 points. And then you still, got, you still have a round maybe to track him down. You never know what he's holding, uh, what he's got holding his cards here. I mean, Shannon is looking really strong, so it's like he needs to do, you know, Tom has to do a lot to make up that distance, yeah. and that's okay. If you don't want to over-push yourself, fine. Then just keep yourself ahead of Will Powell, and again, keep yourself moving, know where everybody is, so uh, Tom needs to be very aware. So he should be looking around a lot to see what's my distance in front, what's my distance behind. Fanry looks solid on his shoulder to overhead. Of course, the last few reps for Aiken. Got to keep him inside the shoulders, and he does. So he'll get the rep. He'll advance, and you have to control those dumbbells. Can't run down and throw them. You got to take them all the way, set them down, make your way back out. I've seen a couple of different techniques between uh, our teens, our masters, and adaptive. Both most carry at the waist. You've seen a couple people put them in front rack, and I've seen a couple of athletes, including remember Becca Boyd Miller, place them on the shoulders, try to take yes. any little bit. Put them on your yes. shoulders, man. Like, why? you know that there's grip intensive work that has to be done here with the rope climbs. So why put any more strain on your hands? Put it on your shoulders, let your body carry that weight, and walk those things over. And family. We may have another rep here, but he's still got an advance. This thing went down to the floor, and he is in second place. Now he can really putting the not that he didn't have distance now, but after that break in the set of 15. You know, we, I started seeing some of the females in the earlier divisions doing this on this last round. They grab a water bottle and start dumping it on the back. We're seeing that Tom took his shirt off. He's trying to cool off right now. Yes, you want the wind on your skin, but you want to cool yourself down. So, you know, it'd be very smart for any of these athletes if they have any water at all to get them, get that on them. So it's kind of cool them down just a bit. You know, that one of the things that they did talk about in the athlete briefing was heat exhaustion. It does get humid out here. So if you can't cool off, it's going to make your uh, competitive state much more lower than what you'd want it to be. So cool off when you can. Us masters like to say you don't want the engine light coming on. <laughs> you never want the engine light to come on. <laughs> but you can tell, like, like, like Tom is feeling it. Okay, there, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Smart man right there. Way to go, Tom. Well, as you mentioned, he's... Well, let's make you're not going to catch up with Aiken, but also he's got a healthy lead in that. He's got that 90 points if he wants it. If he can finish this out, he's got the 90 points. Well, he needs to be really careful because if Will, who is a very experienced you know, athlete, has been managing that a little bit more, then he can make a push on this yeah. run. I mean, Tom looks like he's feeling it. He's feeling all of those two rounds that he has and uh, isn't excited to be on this last round. Um, so we'll have to see what Will's looking like behind him. Back to the women's division here. We're looking at 60 to 64, 65 plus, just like the men, Debbie Downing, back up the rope Downing out of functional strength CrossFit. Again, in Auckland, New Zealand comes in second in the semis, and she's a five-time games veteran. And I just love the way she's keeping her arms nice and long. Again, that is the safest and best position uh, to save any sort of fatigue on your, on your arms and your, on your biceps. Let your legs do the work. But it does require you to get a very strong and a healthy bite on that rope. Under 10 minutes to go. In fact, about a little less than eight and a half to go. 30-minute time cap. And we talked about it. It's worth the extra five to 10 seconds before you go back up the rope rather than the 30 to 60 seconds oh, it takes to fail. You go when you're ready to go because um, the last thing you want to do is get to this point and not be able to touch that, that upper buckle. I mean, real impressive with uh, Debbie's strength because I, I tell you, she really could keep her arms even straighter than what she's doing. She is pulling a lot. Um, it's nice that she has the ability to be able to do that. Steady walk with the gap that she's got. That's smart. No reason to rush it down to the dumbbells. Compose yourself. Get through this round of 15. 
these athletes experienced enough. That's why they're the games they know. They know the rep counts they want to go in. If you want to knock out an eight and a seven or a nine and a six, you know what you want to do here. You know, and, and Debbie's had an amazing qualifying season. Uh, second in the semis, first in the quarters, eighth out of the open. Just real consistent finishes across the board. So I expect to see her do well over this weekend. And it's no surprise to see her up in the front here on this event as well. Let's take a look at the 65 plus women and Julie Holt out of three fingers CrossFit in at least second in the semis three time games athlete in 14 17 and 19 best finish back in 2019 when she was six a college basketball player alum of Stephen F. Austin and did you see the the awareness that she had go to the shade dump water on your head dump water on your neck cool yourself down as much as you can and be very aware of where, where everyone is the fact that she could look at the camera and wave she knows exactly what's happening around she's not so lost in the event and so lost in the work that she's doing that she's uncomposed so nice job by her and there's a lot of struggle with that, but you can see that she's really locking in on those ropes. It's not the cleanest rope climb, but she's making it happen, you know? Well, there's usually the, the J-hook. She'll do the, that wrap around. It's how she's doing it. it it's the, uh, as a coach explained to me when I started CrossFit and I was learning to climb the rope, he's like, what do you value more right now? Your speed or your security? You go, my security, I'll wrap that rope around the leg. Yep, that's it. That is it. <laughs> Some deep breaths here as these athletes getting in for their final set of rope climbs. Nine shoulder to overhead. Shannon Aiken just looks so strong as he's coming in um, on that last run. Again, not being pushed by anyone. So this is all on him. He's able to go at the pace that he wants to go to still feel successful, to still feel confident, and to still be able to get himself up that rope. And Egan's done a nice job. He took the early lead, had some spacing in that first round, and is just calm, calmly, it's easy to say calmly on the broadcast, <laughs> just expanded the lead. He's pushed it, but he hasn't, you know, you still have two more days of competition. Oh, he's not overshooting. Yeah. He's been very smart about this. And, you know, it, again, if these are skills that you have, great. Um, if you get a lead, there's no sense overextending it for for no reason you're not going to gain anything out of that so um you know take the big risk if there's a big reward but the reward is still the same and he can walk from one to the thing to the other from one element to the next and still have plenty of capacity to be able to do and get the points that he needs uh, he's nine reps away actually 10 you get the nine shuttled overhead the rep for getting across the finish line and he'll have 100 points here on day number one in this test the three rounder with a 30 minute time cap. And you got four and a half minutes. And we're likely going to have some runners still on the course. And for those runners, once they get in, they need to finish the run. It'll be a corral start, less than five reps. Going unbroken here on the set. They got to try to and finish things out. Solid. Wow, that was a solid finish. Let's bring Shannon home as he is going to. Hey, take your time. That's 100 points. No one in sight. 100 points and the event win for Shannon Aiken. Yeah, that is a beautiful start for his weekend. And yeah, a baby. nice win for sure. Again, if you have the chance to knock it out of the park, you definitely have to do that. Right on my tail. And man, that was it right there. He needed that. And it, what that also does with all that distance between him and the rest of the field, that's a confidence boost, not only for him, but against the rest of the field, knowing that they got beat by that much. That's a big deal. He is stealth. Looks really good. So again, for all the official results, standings, go to games.crossfit.com. We have multiple divisions competing here in the Masters once we're out at the North Park. And so our first overall winner, at least in this heat, is Hey, you can all get 100 points. Then 100 points still available for the 60 to 64-year-old women. And then the two groups in the 65-plus. So just over three minutes remaining. And the time cap. Here comes Famry. He's trying to lock up 90 points in the 60 to 64 year old division. Making his way to the Famry, now look at the difference in the way that he's positioning himself you can see on his face the heavy breathing the eyes kind of squeezing he is much he worked way harder than shannon did on this event and i think it's just because if you get too deep in the red early it is a struggle to hold on now granted he's in a great position he's in that second place spot which is 
awesome for Tom. Um, but he is working much harder than Shannon was. Well, there's a mental game, too, because, it, look, you, you got a nine-rep lead on Will Powell, but it's still in your division. You know he's lurking there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Even maybe at some point you don't see him. You, you expect him to make a run, so you're early on still like, I don't want to see Will Powell come back into the arena. I've got to get these reps Of course now. you don't. Yeah. Of course you don't. But he also wants to get through this. And, you know, if you if you go too deep, in, this is one of the things we talk about all the time about getting into that red zone. If you if the needle gets into that red zone, it is too hard. You're then fighting for recovery, and you can't. it's really hard to race. So, I mean... I'm really glad for Tom on this second place finish because that's going to be huge for him. And he's one of the guys I was looking at in this division to really push um, Will Powell. So he needed that, but he needs to recover now. This is huge, 90 points. He was 20th last year in the 50 to 59, so he's aging up in the 60s. So he gets himself, you know, a second place here oh, at yeah. event one. And, you know, you'll, you'll get back to the athlete area and get as much recovery and hydration as you can before they get back out in, in the afternoon. But he knows he's got some points in the bank right now. Less than 90 seconds remaining here, 30-minute time cap. And again, if the runners, as you see, and there's Downing on the course and the camouflage. And Downing right now, unofficially, was leading our 60-plus female division. Of course, you can go to games.crossfit.com for all the official. And there is Gailey coming up behind her on the right side. He is in the black shorts, and that's Christian Gailey out of Paris, France. CrossFit de la Paix, fourth in the semifinals. He was fifth a year ago in this division. He actually finished on the podium back in 2016 in the 55 to 59-year-old division. Yeah, there's some there's some heavy duty experience on Christian for sure with eight opens. He's been around the game a long time, uh, and I like the way that he's finishing. You know, so if you're not going to be able to be one of those top guys, what I see here with his speed that he's coming in, he paced that correctly. He was able to increase his speed and be able to have enough gas in the gas tank at the end to really make some sort of a push. So I'm not sure we have a finish here or if something's happened as the judge will lead it down. I think we may have something uh, with Shadell. Uh, sure, get a shirtle out of uh, CrossFit Ottawa in Ottawa, Tennessee. So hopefully he is okay and will be okay. There's the time cap. I, I tell you what, it is hot out there, but these athletes, man, they came out with a bang. Nice job for these athletes, and uh, whew, it's warm. What a way to start the week. If you finish inside the cap, go to games.crossfit.com for all the official information. We got one heat remaining here are the Masters for the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. Noble CrossFit Games from Madison, Wisconsin. We're inside the Alliant Energy Center. And again, a very good morning. I'm Jeff Bryant alongside Bill Grundle. Later on, we'll check in with Derek Forrest out on the competition floor. And it's going to be our final heat here for the Masters. 
going to be fine. We're going to run. We're going to get on some ropes, throw around some dumbbells. You know that the, the descending three rounds is just beautiful. It's a beautiful setup. There's our classic 21-15, nine in there with the dumbbell shoulder overhead. But we're starting off with some running to get off those, you know, those uh, starting nerves. So 1,400 meters, 1,200 meters, 800 meters, and then those rope climbs in between. This is going to be fun for these athletes. Well, we have seen the recipe work so far today, and it's pretty much the same here. How are you going to get through this? Yeah, I got to race that run. If you are a runner, you got to push that tempo. We saw that it can do some damage to the rest of the field if you can rabbit them out a little bit. So if you have it, use it to your advantage. Uh, other than that, you need to know your ropes. And what I mean by that is if you are good at rope climbs, get busy with your rope climbs. If you're not very strong at the rope climbs, make sure you throttle down just a touch so that you can get to your rope and go to work. It is hot out there, so I, this is probably a little key I'd add to the mix is make sure you cool yourself off when you can. Get some water on your head. They probably didn't hear me say that, but I hope someone told them. Let's take a look at how they're going to line up. We've got 40 athletes out there, males and females in two divisions. We take a look at men's 50 to 54. First of all, they're in lanes 11 through 20, Clint Paddock, Sean Patrick, uh, two of your top athletes coming out of the open in this one in the middle lanes, 55 to 59 here in the men's division. Mike Egan sitting there in lane number 37, women 50 to 54, one of your most experienced athletes of all time. Cheryl Bross will be in lane number six, and that's 50 to 54 year old women. And then lanes 21 through 30 to 55 to 59 year old women. So should be, and there's uh, Lori Mishesnik up in lane at number 23, a name that uh, everyone will know. And so that's how they will line up. Bill, guaranteed to rate athletes to watch. Now you got a few in this one. Yeah, you know, the one of the guys that I'm looking at to do really well, because he's done well in a lot of the rope climb stuff, is Eric Solon out of Norway. Uh, fourth out of the semis, 10th out of the quarters, 55th in the open, has had eight opens under his belt, so we got some experience. Um, he has gone to the game before for the 45 to 49 division. He was 17th back in 2017, but he did really well in the rope climbs. He, in fact, won the rope climb shuttle events, which is going to be big there. But when we're talking about consistency and experience, Cheryl Bross is the athlete. So not only does she have open experience as far as the individuals goes, but you look at what she's done on the podium uh, in this division, um, in the Masters division, two first places, a second place, and basically every time she gets on the floor, she, she's ex she excels. So she's definitely going to be an athlete to watch. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about Cheryl here in a moment. In the meantime, let's check in on the competition floor, Derek Forrest. Derek, it's been a while since we started up at 9 o'clock this morning. Yeah, and it's, it's gotten a lot hotter uh, since 9 o'clock this morning, even though it's in the low 80s in terms of temperature. It's way hotter here on the turf, and I've talked to a ton of athletes after the event wrapped up, and one of the things that they're all saying is the heat is affecting how they go about the workout. It's slippery on the rope climbs, and it's slippery on the dumbbells. So, Bill, like you've been saying all day long, these athletes have got to chalk up because it is affecting the rope climbs and the dumbbells. Well, there you go, Bill. Just like Derek, Derek said, you, you, you think about the heat kind of like just sucking the energy out of you, but that grip, especially on the ropes, and you mentioned chalk so important oh, out here. I mean, wristbands you, and chalk. You see wristbands on every single one of these athletes, and I think that that's just really, really smart. And those athletes that are, especially if you're not used to the heat, and we have athletes from all over the world that are coming here in different parts of the, you know, the country where it's not this hot and this humid. And if you are not used to that humidity, it is a game changer. So you have to really, hopefully, have become acclimated, but then know what to do with those elements. You know, cooling down, having water, chalking up. Uh, make sure you, you keep your hands as dry as possible. And then not over pushing so that you're able to finish strong rather than trying to just you know hold on for dear life as you're making your way. Oh, we almost had a little mix up there. <laughs> You've been talking about this too, Jeff, about like knowing where to go. Maybe they should have put a little spray paint on the ground for those arrows. <laughs> quick, quick, quick hesitation there in the right turn. <laughs> We had a quick U-turn in the uh, the earlier <laughs> heat today. I believe that was the second heat overall. Oh, man, it's a good thing we have those volunteers out there getting that free T-shirt or whatever to help these athletes <laughs> not do an extra lap or throw an extra mile and a half in there somewhere. 
Leading the pack up front, as you just saw, Antonio Boldrini out of CrossFit Redwall. It's out of Ferrara, uh, Italy. He was ninth in the semifinals, former track and field athlete, national champion uh, in his day in the long jump. Competed here a season ago, was 14th in the 55 to 59. And again, right now, he's leading everyone and doing the quick double check. Don't hey. take a left turn or go straight in Boulderini in that 55 to 59 year old division. You got it. And I was actually looking to see uh, where Antonio would Antonio would be in this. You know, having the track background. Okay, not every track person is a distance person or is a miler or is a you know here with here just over a two mile run that they have to deal with. But you've been around it, so. Hopefully he's able to utilize that. Now you know in track it was it was long jump. It was his thing. So even though that's more of a sprint and explosive, you know, he's got that power, which is nice. Uh, but we ha we're going to see what he can do when you add those rope climbs and the dumbbells overhead to it. But he looks strong on the run. Starting to put some distance between him and that that lead pack. Only about a six second uh, lead right now. Again, this first run, it's kind of like, you know, you talk about how to get out there, even if it was like a 400. You want to get out in the beginning, start it off, and then you kind of fall into a pace and fall into some sort of a tempo. Um, feel comfortable with it, and then uh, determine what you need to do when you're getting to those rope climbs. Now, if you are a rope climb person, you should be able to go right off of your run, whatever that is, and get right to work. If you're not a real strong rope climb athlete, then you want, no matter where you are on the floor, throttle back, slow down, bring your heart rate down a little bit so that you feel ready to get to the ropes. I mean, gymnastics stuff, all that will mess with people's heads a lot of times. Oh, yeah. So you want to make sure that you are confident when you get to that rope so you can get going. He's got a seven-second lead right now over that lead pack. He's out at front all alone right now with about a seven-second advantage. He looks great. He looks great. And this is going to be one of those things, if he can get out there, especially, you know, depending on what happens with the ropes and the dumbbells, if he can get out there, the general reaction from the, from the next group is going to be, let him go, and we'll just race back here. So they almost kind of give him that lead. You know, if he needs this lead because he's going to struggle with the other pieces, that's one thing. But right now, everybody is just kind of going like, all right, you know what, he, he's the runner guy. Let him go, and we'll try and catch him on the next couple rounds. Well, he's continuing to put space. He's gone. This is in my head calculation from about a seven-second to about an eight-and-a-half-second lead. So he is, he is pulling away from that, that, that next pack of four athletes. And, again, that's Antonio Baldrini in the 55 to 59 year old male division leading everyone right now but i love the communication he has with all the volunteers and the people up on the sides i mean every single person he went by any sort of fork in the road he was always making sure with the people that are there which way he was supposed to go so real smart because he's out in the front if he messes up i mean no one's gonna no one else is gonna help him He's built it up to about 10 seconds now. So we talked early on. It's about seven seconds. He had then a couple of increments. And over the back half of this first run, he's put two more seconds. Two more seconds may not sound a lot, but you watch the wide angle and you realize how many feet that is. It's a pretty good. That, that's, uh, that's a lot of distance in a run. He'll get back in in under six minutes here, 30 minute time cap. So he finished that first uh, 1400 right around 550, I believe. Whoa, and right to the rope. Look, at that's what you want to see. You want to be able to set yourself up to be able to do that. The least amount of transition time, the better, and that was amazing. Looking around to see where everyone else was. That was a great time to take a look at the rest of the field. Well, we've talked about grip, wristbands and shock, and Boldrini's got all the fingers taped up. I don't know if it's a grip thing or something he does every time, but trying to keep whatever he can dry, I'd imagine. Uh, yeah, and I think you know a lot of people do that because they don't want to tear anything right, on their fingers. Right. Um, I'm not a fan, personally, of having other stuff on my fingers, but that's just me. I, I'm Once I get the chalk on me, I'm okay. But I know a lot of athletes that do, and one, it gives them... Um, they just feel more comfortable. They're not worried now about that. And that's what you want to have. The, the least amount of worries or concerns you have as an athlete, the better it's going to be for you. Black shorts going up the rope right now. The camo top, sleeveless cap, camo top. I believe that's Kim Purdy making her way up. Kim Purdy out of Alberta, Canada. Uh, came in, 
third in the semifinals. She's a gymnast as a youth, volleyball, basketball, marathons, triathlons, done a little bit of everything and making her way up the rope very efficiently. Yeah, and she's moving great and actually handling herself really well. Now, she's had nine opens, but she's a games rookie. And it's really interesting when you have athletes that are for the first time here at the game because you see the names, you know what's out there. They know that they're going to be on TV. They know that there's going to be cameras in their face. And that can rattle a lot of people, but I don't see Kim Purdy being shaken at all by that. Well, her group is pretty tight now. She's in there with Marcia Wells, uh, Sherry Ann Benoit, uh, Natalie Connors out of Ontario. And that first quad in lanes one through four all bunched up on the rope climbs. I think we're going to have a really good race here in the female 50 to 54. But Purdy not the first one to get to the dumbbells out of that, even though she got to the rope relatively quickly. She'll get a quick chalk up, make her way down. And as you see, she's got her other athletes already next to her. And I believe that's uh, maybe Tia Gebby, who is off to her right. Now we'll start to see him line up just to her our left on the screen. That was Marsha Wells who's on there. So let's identify. That is Purdy. Camo top, black shorts, middle of your screen, just off the right. That's going to be Gebby in the gray. Over to the left, athlete 505 in the all gray. That's going to be Marcia Wells. And then on the far right, that's going to be Cheryl Bross in lane number six. And these are the ladies that you cannot not watch while they're doing this. They're the ones that have the most experience. They're the ones that have been around the most. And T, I tell you what, she's second highest point total out of all the semis, out of all the age groups. She had, oh, let me go back, one, two, three, four for five first place wins out of the qualifying events. She's a games rookie and still comes in with the first out of the semis, third out of the quarters, and a fifth out of the open. She had an amazing season. And this is, I'm really interested to see what she can do because finally we get to see on the big stage what she was doing at home. There's Gabby. Gabby is actually leading and she'll take a quick stop, get a swig of water, as you mentioned, with the heat coming up. <laughs> it's still early in the event, but Gabby has the lead here in 50 to 54 year old women. Just moving really well. That was super smart. Take that shot of water. I mean, honestly, I would have dumped some of that on my head, too, just to kind of cool down. But I don't usually get thirsty in things like this. But if you keep the body temperature down, that's going to be a big deal. Um, you know, obviously, you would have to think about setting some of that stuff up. But she looked very comfortable as she was moving through there. And it'll be interesting now that as we start bringing the distance down, we go down to a 1,200-meter run, uh, reduce those rope climbs and those shoulder overhead if she's able to pick up that tempo. So we're going to uh, Gabby and Purdy, 1-2, 50 to 54-year-old. They're back out on the track, back out in the sun. So model the Gooder Sunnies. They're being provided for athletes and volunteers. We thank Gooder for being the official sunglasses of the Noble CrossFit game. So we're on to our second run, second round. This is going to be the 1,200-meter course, then back in for three rope climbs, 15 dumbbell shoulder to overhead. We talk about the round of 15 always, kind of the the round in a 21-15-9 to gut your way through. Well, this is the middle run, the 1,200. It's only 200 less than the 1,400, but now you can really take a look when you come out of the stadium, I guess, Bill. You know where you are. You know if you want to keep the same pace or if you really want to kind of you don't want to throttle up too much because you still have another round to go in the sprint <laughs> round, but you'll, you know if you need to make up some ground here. Oh, 100%. You know that first round's out of the way, so it's, okay, how do I really feel? Let me assess what my body's doing. Is my, how do my arms feel? You see a lot of these guys are shaking out their arms. See Eric Solon right there running nice and relaxed with his arms. You can see a nice little bend. He's not wavering all over the place. You can see Bill Celio in the back with the tattooed arm and the no shirt. He's wavering back and forth, so he's starting to lunge as he's moving, lunge as he's as he's running arms are trying to shake him out doing everything he can uh, but out in the front with uh, with Eric I mean he just looks he looks nice and smooth same thing with Gebby right behind him and Purdy as well uh, just to his right well if you can have that just and you when you think about running you think so much legs your arm play you keep that face relaxed just stay calm just go along take your deep breaths get through the run once you see the uh, the way I run, the hunched over, you know, <laughs> the guy's not, he's not feeling so hot. <laughs> we talked earlier 
about Boldrini's lead in his division. Now you're starting to see Solon's lead on that wide angle about how he's putting a, a little bit of space out there. And look at the, all the athletes that have passed our current leader that came in out of that first run. So uh, Antonio Bold, uh, Boldrini was first on that run. He, was, he looked great on the run. Mm -hmm. We got to the movement stuff. Even though he went right to the rope, he went to the movement issue, you know, pieces with the rope climb and the dumbbells, and all of these athletes moved up ahead. So I think that's a big jump, and we were wondering what was going to happen with Antonio. Now we know. The run was his thing, but the other pieces weren't. Well, Solon moving along with a couple of the females in the 50 to 54-year-old division. Again, Purdy and Gebby behind him. Now you can start to see how the field is spread out here on the backside of the trails. And this is going to be great between these two ladies because you can kind of pace off each other, but there's a game that you want to play. You know, do you want to jump out into the front or do you want to, like, just let them lead? There's a, uh, a lot of mental things you can do here. So you can see Purdy just off to the back with the dark hair and the ponytail right behind Gebby. Gebby's got that longer stride. She's taller, so she's able to use that. But you can see them just bouncing back and forth. And it'll be interesting to see how they how they work themselves through the rope climb and the dumbbell shoulder overhead to what really is going to happen on that 800-meter run. Who's going to decide to jump out to the front and really uh, test the other? And I guess the mental game, too, in, in running, is there two philosophies that you take in you know event tests like this and any time you're running is, do you want to be the Steve Prefontaine? I want to lead from the front <laughs> yep. all the time. I don't know. I want to be out front. Or there's something to be said here about being the person behind Purdy, being, being Gabby here. I'm going to make you run faster. I'm going to stay behind you. I'm not going to pass you here. We're in the middle of this race. I want you to feel a little bit of pressure, and I want you to set the pace right. and, it, and maybe save it a little on the tank. Well, I think what's happening is that uh, it really depends what's going on in, in between each of those athletes' ears. Is Gabby saying, like, I'm going to, I'm going to let you think? That you're, yeah. that you're beating me, but I'm right on you. It's like, oh, I'm going to pretend like I'm tired. Um, you, know, you see Gabby shaking out her arms. Now, this is one of the things that Purdy can't see, can't see that she's shaking. When I see someone shaking out their arms, I see them as concerned about the rope climbs. If you're not shaking out your arms and you're just running out to the front and you're looking good, like Eric Solon is there out in the front, he just looks relaxed. I haven't seen any sort of movement or shake or anything with him. He looks calm and confident. Well, Purdy, either Solon's pace has is, is come down a little bit or Purdy's ramped it up because Purdy's a close guy. But, and it's not this, they're not competing against each other, but you can just tell some paces. And then Gabby keeping pace. She's a, a second or so behind Purdy, but they're still all within striking distance. This group of three is going to make their way back into the stadium. Now they're going to get on to three rope climbs, 15 dumbbell, shoulder to overhead. Solon with the first arm shakes that we've seen him do, just kind of prepping himself for those rope climbs. And this is what we want to do. You can get really tight when you're running. You want to keep those arms relaxed, especially when you have to do rope climbs right after that. Well, now here's one thing we see with Gabby and Purdy coming back in the 50 to 54-year-old women. Remember, when they were on the dumbbell shoulder to overhead, the round of 21, it was just a grouping. Wells, Purdy, Gabby, Bross were all there. Now it's just two of the feet. They have separated oh, yeah. themselves a little bit. Yeah, they definitely put the pressure on uh, the rest of the field with that run. So again, Solon, Eric Solon out of Norway, CrossFit Jessheim, fourth in the semifinals, competed back in 2017, was 17th in the 45 to 49 year old division. Has a nice lead here in the 50 to 54 year old as he is in the rope climbs, the three rope climbs of the middle round. They'll have 15 dumbbells shoulder to overhead after this. You can see right there, Purdy with the, holding those arms bent while she's trying to get those those legs locked. I, I mean, she's able to do it. That's great. Just one of the things as a coach, you're going to look at that. Just keep your arms locked. Her arms are straight. That's what we want to see. Arms straight, even if you're struggling to get your, your legs locked on there. I'm going to tell you what, if you're Purdy and Gabby, you're back in the stadium, but you look, in the, these are the first eight lanes in the 50 to 54-year-old women. You still see Cheryl Bross back into the right. She's still there. It's just amazing, this division. 50 to 54 year old women as we thought two were well they're putting some space and you look behind you all of a sudden well we're coming in and we're, we're right with you you thought you had a pretty good lead as gabby maintains the lead party was back into the stadium first now gabby's making the walk down there far side top of your screen and there's soul in the middle and here comes Purdy. 
And I mean, a little bit more deliberate walk. Well, definitely smart. I mean, Gabby is using her length, her height, to her advantage on those rope climbs. Now we're moving these dumbbells. And what's really fun to see is that we have a male athlete and a female athlete, literally rep for rep on this, on this, uh, the end of this second round here. Solon is all alone in the middle of the field, leading the 50 to 54 year old. But let's talk about these 50 to 54 year old. There is the race, Purdy in the middle of the black shorts. Here's Gebby, who had the lead once they got to the dumbbells. Tia Gebby at a sundown CrossFit, and she's in that great sleeveless jersey. You've got Marshall Wells, one of the front runners now, as Purdy is going to take the dumbbells right behind her. So, Gabby was the first of the dumbbells, but Purdy will pass her in the round of 15, shoulder to overhead. Now we're now we're going to see, did you pace correctly on that round two, especially when you had these two ladies back and forth. The fact that Purdy's up in front on those dumbbells, I think that's a huge uh, boost of confidence to her because she was right next to, to T earlier, and T's so strong on those ropes. But I think that T's starting to hit that red line. You can see her start to slow down. Eric Solon, the overall leader in the 50 to 54 year old division for the males. And as you talked about, it was great to have a male and a female going head to head. And right now, it's Purdy that got back out of the stadium. And they're going to get back out of the stadium right about the same time. I think because he had the middle lane, he'll make it out just ahead of her. But they're, they're neck and neck. Here's kind of a side race to watch. Well, they're neck and neck now, as Solon's Pur behind Purdy. Yeah. Now, we saw Purdy, and, you know, we saw that battle between Purdy and uh, Gebby as they were making that way around, who was going to kind of jockey to the front. But as they were doing that, they were making up some of that distance on Solon. So now that Purdy's out in front, it's going to be really interesting. Is, is Eric going to try to get out there? Is he going to try to race uh, Purdy at all? Or is he like, hey, I, I got my, I'm in the lead right now. I don't need to worry about that. And is T just going to let it go? Because like, you know, Purdy moved out to the front and T looks tired. Um, is she just going to settle with that second place or is she going to try to race this, for this first event? Uh, Gabby is with inside of, of Purdy, but it's still a pretty good lead. You're going to have to ramp up here. And on this run, it's a, it's an 800 meter. It's twice around the traditional track. Yep. And we've all done it at the box running 800. So what do you, what do you have left here? <laughs> and can you make up some ground once you get back in the stadium? Because once you get back in the North Park, it's only two rope climbs and nine uh, dumbbells shoulder to overhead. Purdy with a uh, Purdy with a big look as she turned around to see where everybody is. So she knows exactly what's happening right now. Knows what she needs to do. Um, again, the only part that she was, and I'm not even going to say she was slow on the rope climbs, uh, but where T was able to make up any distance on Purdy was on the rope climb. So she just has to push that run, do her thing. And as I'm watching her run and the way that she's presenting, I don't see her moving, you know, inefficiently. I don't see her breathing extra hard. Gabby right there trying to hold on. I think Gabby, I, honestly, I think Gabby is just, I'm good with second. I am good with this position. I'm not going to race to get up to where she is. Um, I'm okay with 90 points. Uh, T. Gabby has done her, you know, homework and checked out her competitors. She knows Kim Purdy's a marathon or a triathlete. So this is just kind of her jam oh, yeah. on this last one. So, uh, you know, you, you try to get her and what your specialty is at some point in this year. T. Gabby with that swimming background. She knows Purdy's the distance runner. Yep. I mean, and that's a decent distance right there. So, you know, if if T really wanted to go for it, okay. But that's going to mean that the rope climbs and those dumbbells are going to be really uncomfortable. Um, I think they're good holding that position. We'll see what happens. I think, you, I think if you make a run at it realistically here, you're staring at a rope when you get back. <laughs> exactly. you're, you're watching pretty new rope lines. <laughs> Solon still a, a healthy lead out front. We at one point, I did see uh, in the background Stevenson, but he's well behind. Richard Stevenson is going to try to get himself 90 points here, and here is Gabby. There in the white uh, sleeveless jerseys. We're moving around, and that's going to be O'Connell. Or is it Ross? No, uh, it's going to be Wells. There's Stevenson back there. There's Bross in the background. Richard Stevenson, a black flag CrossFit. High school and college golf back in the day. And a track athlete as well. That's in Avon, Ohio. He's third in the semifinals. So he's going to coming in with that number three spot in the semis, trying to make a run at the podium this week. Man, Purdy looks good. Look at that. 
doesn't need to be jumping out there, but she's picking up the tempo. Barty's going to go to try, try to go Sam Briggs here and just win it overall. You know, I, I think I think it, there, we talk about confidence and momentum uh, all the time with with athletes, when, especially when you have a, a long, multiple event, a thing like this. And when you start an athlete with momentum, it's hard to knock them off of that. It, you know, this is building confidence. And here's Purdy; she's a rookie, but building confidence, uh, having that momentum. And really, you know, kind of jettisoning them into that flow state for these next upcoming events. So pretty the only one in the tunnel, the only one in the stadium. Couple of rope climbs here. Looks extremely comfortable. I expect you to take the deep breath in the walk and get right on it. Maybe grab some chalk. Now, she does have that little lead on Gabby, but she needs to be smart about how she's doing. You know, you can't get sloppy with it. You don't You don't make a movement that you're still racing. Yeah. You haven't won it yet, so be smart. I, I, I think she would be very smart to get some chalk on her hands. We just saw Gabby on the right side of your screen hop up on her rope. So it's not a lot of distance that she has on, on T at all. And Natalie Connors coming on the left side of the camo. So... To, Natalie right there as well. I mean, it takes, look, we've talked about the penalty for failing rope climb. It takes one mistake here to see all that work go away. Oh, yeah. You could go from first to fifth really fast in this position. Solo, meanwhile, steady Eddie here with the big lead that he had. No reason to rush it. 100 points is a 100 points. So he, they, we haven't seen any of the other guys around, so Eric can walk. But on the women's side, you have to see them running. And we do see that. We see T trying to run up behind uh, Purdy up in the, on the middle of your screen there, right behind Eric's shoulders. Purdy was already on the dumbbells when Gabby came running up. So here's your race, 50 to 54-year-old women. Purdy and Gabby, one rep left for Purdy, and she'll outrace everybody. She'll take 100 points here in the event, and Gabby's going to get across. She'll get 90 points. So you can see that fatigue build up, Bill, as you talked about in round number two, but able to save it off and got away in there. Here's Solon with 100 points. No, no issue here. Wow. I mean, we haven't really seen, at least up at the top, a foot race like that between uh, any of the competitors, but what a great finish for both those ladies. And then, you know, with Eric Solon, he didn't need to run in there. He didn't need to get out and, and really race. Uh, he had a nice distance on Stevenson, but what a nice start for him. Connors is across, I believe, in third in that 50 to 54-year-old. Stevenson, who you just mentioned coming across, it looked like the way he was breathing coming across, he made up some ground. He didn't not finish that far behind Solo right. once they got back in the North Park. <laughs> right. He tried to make that run. And now we're going to head on up to the 50 to 59-year-old Baldini, or Baldrini is in. We saw him, Antonio Baldrini, when we started this event nearly 25 minutes ago, show Bross coming in in the 50 to 50-year-old. But we saw Antonio Baldrini way out ahead of the entire pack. Way out ahead in round one, fell way back in round two, and was able to have enough composure and recovery on that round two to get himself back up into yeah. that third place spot um, on that last round. But overall, he's he's gravy in the 50 to 59. We're oh, talking yeah. overall. As you'll have another one of your athletes uh, make their way in. That yeah, was Paddock. They've got it a little over four minutes, just about four and a half minutes, actually three and a half minutes, excuse me, in this time cap. If you're out of the course, got to complete the run. You can't shut it down and walk because they're doing the corral finish. So whoever comes in, well, that, that's going to be your placing. Shannon Bunce there making her way through those sets of the dumbbells. Bunce out uh, the U.S. unaffiliated 56-year-old here in the 50 to 59-year-old division. She's going to get through in the event. So a nice finish for Shanna Bonds. And that's going to be a fun division to watch. you got Lori Mischesnik in there, who's your uh, champion back in 2019, defending champion from a season ago. So that's going to be a fun division to watch as well. And this is Celio, I believe, here in the black shorts. He's in the 55 to 59-year-old division. Bill Celio out of Santa Rosa, California, and B-Free CrossFit. We saw him on a handful of those runs. I think the temperature was definitely having an effect on him because he was really looking like he was 
I don't want to say struggling, but he was really having to work extra hard through those runs. Um, you know, able to finish up nice and strong, look great on those dumbbells, but that run was not very comfortable for him. Just over three minutes left in the cap. Staying here in the 50 to 59 year old division for the males. That's going to be Leonardo Lima, 55 year old, had a CrossFit crown, Cadal in Espirito Santo, Brazil. Actually came in first seed in the semi finals. In 2019, he was fifth, 2018, 11th in the 50 to 54 year old division. You can see all the athletes are trying to find some shade somewhere they can't find it anywhere. <laughs> Being that it's a, like absolute middle of the day right now. I believe that's Alexia Feynman out of Emeryville, California, CrossFit Oakland, 55 years old, three-time master competitor, best finish, seventh in 2017 in the 50 to 54. We go back to the 50-54 year old division. Like that, that is Lacera Menini in the 55 to 59 out of CrossFit Silver Fern in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Going to be cross Julie Ackerman, 50 to 54 year old division. And trying to race across here is Coates, Leah Coates. So now we're starting to see a lot of the 55, 59 year old female competitors. There's another one from the 50 to 54, Marianne Hogberg out of Grudea in Denmark. Finished fifth season ago, so she'll try to make the jump. A couple spots on that podium this season. Plenty of time for the athletes making their way to the dumbbells. Get the nine dumbbells shouldered overhead, make their way on in, trying to finish this thing out. Get in under the time cap. Joanne McCullough, left side of your screen, black pants, camo tank top right next to her. That's CC Fougere and the light color, the gray tank top, finishing her dumbbell shoulder over. Got a no rep that time with three to go. Meanwhile, McCullough raced on through the finish line, so McCullough is in. As Adams will come in, Jeff Adams in the 50 to 54 year old grouping. About 20 seconds remaining as Fujira is in. 20 seconds to go in the cap. Best race though, Bill, I think, in, in this heat, without a doubt, 50 to 54 year old women was fun to watch. Well, not only fun to watch, but just uh, not even the fact that there was a foot race between those two ladies, but the fact that they were the first athletes across the field, period. They won the event, hands down. So that, what a great way to finish for those two ladies. Well, there is the time cap here for 50 to 54 and 55 to 59 year olds. Again, the big race and the female 50 to 54 year old as Kim Purdy was able to maintain the lead and outrace Tia Gebby. And the end, it was Solon who put distance between himself and the rest of the pack. And again, for all the official standings, it's games.crossfit.com in any, any division. So the morning session over here for our age groups. You know, and I think it was the greatest event you could have had for these athletes to do. Let them get that first event jitters out of the way. Uh, we got to see some good running. We got to see some gymnastics. We got to see some bar, some uh, dumbbell work and some strength work. Uh, we, are ha we are setting ourselves up for an amazing week with these athletes. Let's head down to the competition floor. Here is Derek Forrest. Thanks, guys. Here with two of the winners, we've got Kim Purdy. You had a nice little race with Tia Gebby. Just talk about the race, but you also have a marathon background, so you, you were able to, to use that run to your advantage. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I feel like it was like 15 or 20 years ago, so I'm not really sure how much that helps, but yeah, running's the strong thing for me. I like it. Congratulations to you, Eric. You said this was right up your alley. What was your strategy, especially as you headed into that second run? 
Uh, well, I know I can run, uh, so I tried to hold back just slightly on the first round, um, but it still got heavy on the second round for sure. Uh, but I used that to my advantage, and I, I can rope climb, um, so it felt good, uh, even though the, uh, the workout was harder than I thought. Awesome. Congratulations, guys. Back to you. Thanks a lot, Derek. Well, morning session is done out here at North Park for the Adaptive and the Masters and the teams. Kind of your thoughts on the morning. Oh, man, it what a great way to start. Not only from our youth that we have, our seedlings of this sport, but to our the longevity Masters um, and just showing what you can do no matter what age you are. It was an amazing way to start off, and I'm fired up for the week. Due to the postponement, a quick note as well. We'll have to change our broadcast schedule. We'll go to games.crossfit.com to keep up with the afternoon sessions for age group and adaptive. Bill and I will be back with you tomorrow. It's been a blast, Bill. So for Bill Grunner, Tom Miazga, Derek Forrest, I'm Jeff Wrightwell. We'll talk to you on the age groups and adaptives tomorrow, but plenty of action coming rest of the day from the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. The 2022 Noble CrossFit Games are sponsored by Thor, the official supplement partner of CrossFit. Noble, no excuses, no shortcuts, no gimmicks, no tomorrows. Noble. U.S. Army, what's your warrior? Kalo, the official ring of the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. And guaranteed rate the official mortgage company of the Noble CrossFit Games.
We are off and running on day two at the Noble CrossFit Games. We are through the opening event here at the North Park for age groups and adaptives. Welcome back to our midday show here at Day at the Games presented by Thorne. Tommy Marquez joined as always by Annie Sakamoto. And Annie, we just saw event one wrap up for these uh, age groups and adaptives. What are your thoughts on that heavy dose that they just got? Well, not only was it a heavy dose, Tommy, it's hot on the field right now. I'm sweating just standing next to you. So to see these age group and adaptive athletes absolutely send it on this first event was super motivational. I mean, if you're going to get fit, might as well get tan, right? Taking a look at some of the top stories, starting with the Masters men, who stands out to you? Uh, for sure, it would be jo Josh Marunde. So this is a rookies uh, athlete in the 35 to 39 year old division. He's up against game veterans like Roy Gamboa, Craig Kenny, Sam Dancer, and he just sent it on that first event. He saw that it was an opportunity for him to get 100 points, and he took it. And on the women's side, the top story for the Masters women, I have a feeling it's going to maybe be on the other side of the coin is Josh. Definitely, and that would be in games veteran uh, Rebecca Voigt. So this is an event that we knew teed up really well for Rebecca. But here's what's so impressive to me. She beat athletes like Kelly Friel and Jen Ryan by over a minute. And to me, that's very impressive, especially from a, a you know somebody who's 40 years old. And taking a look at the team division now, the 16 to 17 in particular, we expected a two horse race and one of those two athletes got the first blow in event one. Yeah, and oddly enough, it was actually Trista Smith. So she was fourth place in the 14 to 15 year old division last year. We really thought that it was gonna be Kerstetter uh, that we might have it this year. She comes out swinging with a home run. She gets first place on that first event. And even better, she beat Kerstetter by about 30 seconds. And over in the adaptive divisions, Rogan Dean put on a clinic in the men's lower extremity. And, you know, Rogan Dean is somebody who won three out of six of the semifinal events. So we know that he's capable of hitting home runs. The question is, how does he do across multiple events? Because he didn't win the semifinals. Well, he got second on both of today's first events. Here's the most amazing part, Tommy. He hit 325 pounds on his front squat in the Max Trio. And this is for an above the knee amputee. Just some amazing numbers being put up in that event. The beauty of the CrossFit Games is there is so much to see and do here on site. And for more on some of the on site perks for affiliates through the Affiliate Partner Network, let's send things over to Caleb Banfield. Kayla Banfield here. I'm at the affiliate area in the vendor pavilion and I'm joined by Bowie from Thorne. Bowie, would you like to start by giving us a bit of an overview on what Thorne is? Absolutely. So Thorne is the official supplement partner of CrossFit. We offer a full NSF certified for sport product line from performance-based products like protein and creatine all the way to foundational items like fish oil and multivitamins. And Thorne is a part of our affiliate partner network at CrossFit. Can you tell us what benefit affiliates have uh, through Thorn? So as an affiliate owner, you have free access to a professional account with us, which gets you wholesale pricing. We average 47% margins across our full product line and the ability to sell online without any minimum orders, monthly quotas or contracts. Sounds great. Thanks, Bowie. If you're at the CrossFit Games this weekend, make sure to check out Thorn in the vendor pavilion. Thanks, Kayla. We're going to get you caught up on what's left as far as competition is concerned. Remember, we had a couple of events bumped from yesterday to today, thanks to a little bit of a weather delay. We still have one more event remaining for the age group and adaptives. They will close that out between 2.30 and 6 p.m. We have opening ceremonies up next, and then the individuals will do event number two. The teams will do events two and three. Those will wrap up right around 5.30 p.m. local time. And then this is what got bumped to today for the individuals. It's called shuttle to overhead. A little bit of running, a little bit of max jerk, using 300 pounds for the men, 200 pounds for the women and for the teams. A little two-parter here with a one rep max front squat, one rep max jerk, and they're all a little bit of running there. Three different mile intervals as a team, and then as two person pairs as well. And for more information on these two events, we're gonna send things over to Adrian Conway and Dan Bailey. Hey, thanks Tommy. I'm Adrian Conway and I'm joined here by my extremely fit friend, 
Dan Bailey, who had an opportunity to test this event prior to showing up in Madison here this week. Dan, what are we going to see from the athletes out there? Yeah, when Boz gave this one to us, it's a very unique event in the fact that both portions are scored. So the run and how many times you can get that weight overhead. So when I looked at it, it was how hard can I run to maximize my points there, as well as get right to the barbell and start my shoulder to overhead. So when I did this one, I was competing against another girl. I beat her on all the runs, but she also beat me on all the jerks. So watching this unfold with 40 athletes in each division is going to be very exciting out on the field. I love it. This event isn't just a test of fitness, but also a little strategy. Back to you, Tommy. Thanks, Adrian. A whole lot of fitness in that frame right there. But some athletes after day number one help their cause immensely on the back half of the competition. They are the big movers from day number one, and here are the ones that move the most. Three of these athletes on your screen had an event win throughout day number one, and most of them are in the top ten. You look at Pat Vellner closing things out and Nick Matthew. They got back-to-back -back event wins to close things out for the men. But the athlete in your mind that helped her cause the most has to be Ariel Lowen. It definitely is. So we saw right there, Ariel got 16th on the bike event. Well, then she got 7th on the speed skill event, which moved her up into 7th place overall. The event win in that third and final event last night moved her into 3rd place overall. Not only was this the first event win for Lowen at the Games, what was most impressive to me was to watch her reel in Tia. Just without any hesitation. She was right on the bar, right on the parallel bars. Great to see Ariel Lowen make a big move on day one. And for an athlete that got in through the last chance qualifier, great to see her have that electric moment in the Coliseum. Up next, we have the opening ceremonies, and here's what's in store as far as that ceremony is concerned. Some of the biggest countries as far as representation is concerned. U.S. leads the way, followed by Canada, and then Norway. We've talked about the teams, the individuals coming up through that country. They are the third largest country represented here in total, 39 countries across the board. Andy, you're an athlete. For the opening ceremonies, as far as that's concerned, What's its significance to you? I think mainly it's a time when we all get to come together, the age groups, the adaptive, the individuals, and celebrate all of our fitness from all of the countries of the world that are here participating. And I have to say, as an, an affiliate owner, this is also really important to me because it is the representation of the affiliates all over the world. Mm -hmm. That's going to get going in just a moment. But before we go, we want to say a quick thanks to our presenting sponsor, Thorne. The official supplement partner of CrossFit. You can visit thorn.com forward slash u slash CrossFit to shop the NSF certified for sport product line. Trusted by CrossFit, these products are tested for more than 200 banned substances to give athletes peace of mind knowing that nothing in the extensive banned substance list will show up on a drug test. That's going to do it for us here at Day at the Games, presented by Thorne for Tommy Marquez and Andy Sakamoto. We'll be back at the end of day to wrap up all of the competition. But don't, don't go away. Stick around. Up next is the opening ceremonies. After birth, I still remember I could not walk downhill with the stroller. Now all of a sudden, podium was realistic. You've also got this development where you're starting to get these younger athletes. Kids who have been doing CrossFit since they've been in elementary school. Now O'Brien, we saw her stare right in the face of the reigning women's champion and not blink. The young, upcoming, new blood of the sport.
whether your goal is to chase records, write history, or become the best version of yourself, the intention put into the process is the same. To push your body to give its best every single day. For your body to give you what you want, you have to give it what it needs. The consistency you apply in every detail around your training is key. It allows you to perform one more rep in the last second. It's that rep that makes all the difference to make you better tomorrow. Yourself, it's just like a hundred dollar bill. No matter what you go through, if you believe in yourself, you still have value. The cool part about Expanding Horizons is there's no other program out there that bridges the gap between youth on probation and life after probation. So it's a court order program uh, where they come to CrossFit four days a week for an hour and participate in CrossFit. And this, the success of that program over the course of the last four years has been phenomenal. We all talk about this, right? CrossFit's developing friendships through thrusters and pull-ups. Truly, that means community, and we surround the youth with community. What these kids need is they need a, a positive community that really rallies around them and supports them to be the, the, the best person that they, they can be. You can make it. Remember the values you have in yourselves. That's the lesson I got for you. to the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. This is the 16th year of the CrossFit Games. 
It is a tremendous accomplishment for each athlete who has earned their right to compete here this week. They represent not just themselves, but also their home gyms, their local communities, and their countries. They also represent the incredible global reach of CrossFit and the vibrant international CrossFit community we all have become. Thank you for being here to celebrate them with us today at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games opening ceremony. Us welcoming our first country, first country Argentina, Argentina Black Bear, Black Bear, Bear Sasha Diego. Sasha Diego. Australia, Flag Bear, Jay Crouch. There are 18 athletes competing. Claudia Campos. Jeffrey Adler is with CrossFit Wonderland. He finished first at the CrossFit Atlas Games. This is his fourth games appearance. He started CrossFit in 2015 in Quebec. Next up, Chile, Benjamin Conte. Benjamin competing in our Team Boys 16 to 17. It is his first games appearance. Colombia. Flag bear, Julian Cerna. Let's just skip the facts for now. Just, just, the just, the name. Yeah. Yeah. just do the name. Costa Rica. Flag bear, Jonathan Varea. Czech Republic. Flag bear, Anita Tucker. Denmark, Andre Hude. Finland, flag bearer, Henrik Hapalainen. Next up, France with 10 athletes competing, flag bearer, anne Lore Cotusson. Germany, flag bearer, Moritz Fiebig. Next up, Greece, flag bearer, John Papadopoulos. Guatemala, flag bearer, Pablo Rosell. Next, 
Next up, Hungary, flag bearer, Laura Horvath. Iceland, flag bearer, Bjorgvin Karl Gudmundsson. Ireland flag bearer Lucy McGonagall. Israel flag bearer Tal Simpson. Italy, flag bearer, Giulio Roggio. Jordan, flag bearer, Yusuf Diab. Republic of Korea, flag bearer, Su Young Choi. Latvia, flag bearer, Uldes Upenix. Mexico flag bearer Leonardo Torres. <laughs> Netherlands flag bearer Minka van Overfelt. New Zealand flag bearer, Jaylee Mansi. Norway flag bearer, Jacqueline Dahlstrom. Flag bearer, Harvey Rireg. Poland, flag bearer, Gabriela Megala. Roman Karenikov, Arthur Semenov, and Andrei Petku. Serbia, flag bearer, Lazar Jukic. Slovakia, flag bearer, Karen Freova. South Africa, flag bearer, Keelan Henry.
Spain, flag bearer Shashbi Osa. Sweden, flag bearer Pia Goon. Next up, Turkey, flag bearer Sir Kia. United Kingdom, flag bearer Joanne McCullough. Venezuela, flag bearer Mario Santaea. United States of America, flag bearer Mallory O'Brien. They have 219 athletes competing. Our flag bearer, Mallory O'Brien, finished first in the World Wide Open. She finished first in the 2022 individual quarterfinals, and she also finished first at the Granite Games. This is her fourth games appearance, second appearance as an individual, fourth in the teen girls, 14 and 15th division in 2018, and fifth in the teen girls, 14 to 15 division in 2019. She started CrossFit in 2016, and she is coached by five-time fittest man on earth, Matthew Fraser. The Worldwide 2022 Open. The road to the CrossFit Games started back in February with the Worldwide Open, the largest sporting event on earth, participatory sporting event on earth. During the three-week competition, one event was released online each Thursday, and athletes had four days to record and submit their scores. Anyone who was at least 14 years old could sign up and join in on the first stage of the CrossFit Games season with special divisions for teenagers, age groups, and adaptive athletes in RX scaled and foundation categories. This year, nearly 300,000 individuals participated in the Worldwide Open. Our oldest athlete competing this year is Joe Dickhoff. Incredibly fit 72-year-old is from CrossFit New Style in the Netherlands. On the other end, our youngest athlete competing this year is 14-year-old Caroline Sabatini from CrossFit Verdicts. Is our youngest women's group of individual athletes with an average age of 26.4 years old. There are four constants in the CrossFit game since 2012, excluding 2020. Rebecca Voigt Miller began competing in 2008. CrossFit Invictus started competing in 2009. Rich Froning started competing in 2010. And Lynn Knappman competed in 2010 as well. All still with us here in 2022 at the CrossFit Games. We also have siblings competing this year. A few of them include Saxon and Spencer Panchik, who are the eighth set of siblings to compete together at the CrossFit Games, but the first twins.
Behind each athlete, there are others. There are family members and friends. There are training partners. There are coaches. When we celebrate these athletes, we acknowledge not just them, but the people who support and challenge them to be the best they can possibly be. Athletes, this week we honor you by providing you with an extraordinary test here at the ultimate proving grounds of the fittest on earth. Congratulations. Now will everyone please rise for the presentation of colors and the singing of our national anthem. With us today are members of the United States Air Force and the Madison Police Department Color Guard, led by Master Sergeant Ryan Brands. Our national anthem is being sung by Alex Yant, a local affiliate member with CrossFit Recursive right here in beautiful Madison, Wisconsin. Alex. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the rest? we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets wreck glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the One more time, ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for Alex Yant and our national anthem. Keep that round of applause going, if you would, for the Madison Police Department Color Guard, again, led by Sergeant Ryan Brands. Let's keep it going for our athletes, our judges, and all of our staff out there as well.
Tiger Wing from Madison, Wisconsin. Rumor has it there's going to be a flyover, but that will officially conclude our opening ceremony. We are excited to have you guys here, and I'm sure we'll be hearing some noise here shortly.